Folks, and welcome to S4, where we talk about the serious issues involving paranormal and current events. Coming to you live from the S4 headquarters in the heart of the Cascade Mountains in the studio here in Cape Horn, Washington. So tonight, June 6, S4 headquarters and studio is staged in the heart of the Cascades. A magical place, a mysterious place, yet also a deadly place. We have human predators, traffickers, Bigfoot, UFOs, and of course hauntings. There's a lot of travesty throughout history up here in places for things to hide, which makes it a paranormal and mysterious mecca. We have volcanoes and mineral deposits, which lead to energy sources for both spirits and UFOs. Tonight we'll be exploring the various aspects of this with our, some of our locals, Harmony, who is also an author and resident of the Darrington area, and Savella Khalil, resident of Marble Mount and host of the Marble Mount Sasquatch Conference held in August. We'll be hearing more about tonight as well. So let's begin. So how, how's everyone tonight? Excellent. And of course we have Arnold, who is a retired Washington State Parks Ranger. So when it comes to the Cascades, Arnold can tell you all kinds of stories. And you know, when it comes to Missing 401, which a lot of people know about a lot of people don't know about actually and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by that as many people as we have missing they you know what's missing 401 well huh, we'll be talking a lot more about that aspect of it June 27th what constitutes paranormal missing people but tonight we are focused on the Cascades now I'm not going to bring up Mount Rainier because Mount Rainier by itself could be a whole show we're talking pretty much the Darrington, well, the Skagit County, Whatcom County, Snohomish County areas of the Cascades. Because that in itself is, well, hell, Harmony, have you, have you ever seen the, uh, the light that goes from White Horse Mountain to Mount Baker? Yeah, it's a White Horse light. Yep. Yeah. It's a... Yeah. It's a UFO that travels from the White Horse Mountain to Mount Baker at least one or two times a week. We get reports about that one. So, Arnold, what's your thoughts on, uh, do you think mountain ranges in, in by itself are draws for UFOs? Yep. What brings them here? The, isola the isolation? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. Mm. Have you heard of the Jim Creek uh, broadcasting area? Say again. The Jim Creek broadcasting area. No. Oh, the they Jim, have, yeah, Jim Creek. The, oh, Jim Creek. Yeah, they yes. have a big military yes. installation where they can broadcast all. It, it can broadcast down to the sea. It can bounce off of the atmosphere and reach all the way around the world. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of the locals believe that those lights are appearing here. So um, that it's, you know, attracting that kind of uh, it, it, activity it, here. It's a, it's a good possibility because uh, a lot of UFOs seem to be drawn to military bases, uh, which, right? Jim, Jim, which Jim Creek is. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people forget yeah, and about it's Jim a, Creek. It's an ultra low frequency ULF uh, broadcasting. So, you know, if they're working with different frequencies and fields, electromagnetic fields. Right. That would definitely catch my attention if I was, you know, looking down upon Earth with those kind of devices to be able to read that stuff. In, mo- in most of that area, their cables are underground. Mm hmm. Uh, and. Mm-hmm. The, the other the other thing with volcanoes, uh, I do believe they draw geothermal energy to power some of their crafts, depending on which race it is. Yeah. Yes. That would make sense too. Um, then you talk about the mines. You, you know, we got gold mines up here. We've got uh, <laughs> what's the <laughs> other one? Mercury mines in Cumberland. Is it a mercury? Where's Kayla when we need her? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Eric. <laughs> Huh? Mutilating cattle. Okay, yeah. She's Lots of cattle cattle out here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, cattle. Uh, Eric, uh, you're you're talking about the gold mines and stuff. Then you go down further down towards Cleolum, Roslyn, Ronum. It's all mm-hmm. coal mines mm-hmm. that we're digging around in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yes. uh, there was an agate mine somewhere around there, too. Yes. Like, uh, so, it's mine. all sorts of resources. Cleolum. Yeah, oh, okay. Galena. So when you're when you're talking the minerals, uh, you know I I can't. Yeah. I'm I'm drawing a blank here, but I know some of the races we've discussed come after gold, and they come after some of the minerals for uh, what they use on their craft. Mm-hmm. Which is insane. I, I don't see that. No. No, because. <clears throat> Every planet in the universe has certain minerals and things on it. But every solar system right. has some of everything. Okay. They have so far... What about the terraforming the theory? No, the what? Terraforming, where they're inhabiting a new planet that they're trying to make, uh, like putting... <laughs> different things into the atmosphere, different elements, so that they can uh, change the atmosphere and the environment of that planet. We call it terraforming. The the problem with that one is there are much easier planets throughout our galaxy, like (laughs) the the Milky Way galaxy alone. Um, Even our solar system, there are easier planets to do that with because none of them are within our habitable zone. We actually present right. a problem to them because we are a parasite to this earth and to them. Right. If we are, if our um, atmosphere isn't perfect for them, we would be considered a parasite. So if they, like, mm-hmm. there's much easier ones for them to find and terraform to their liking that does not have mm-hmm. any, even uh, microbiological creatures in it at all. Mm-hmm. So, Savella, have you have you ever seen UFO? Uh, I think I did, but I I'm not sure. I couldn't prove it. And it actually, what it hap- what happened was I was driving home from work one night because I got off about ten o'clock at night, and I was driving up Highway Twenty, and right in front of me went a big light, like straight across, and it was going straight across to. And I was like, whoa, and I stopped. But, I mean, it was there and gone, I mean, really quick. 
And and when I got home, I asked everybody. I says, "Did you see that? Did you did you you know?" And they nobody nobody seen anything. I even asked at work the next day, and nobody seen anything. But I saw it when I was driving home. It was around ten at night. Mm-hmm. So, and it was going, and which struck me really um, the odd thing that struck me was you were saying white horse to uh, Mount Baker, mm-hmm. and. Driving up twenty, you're going to be crossing that that white horse to Mount Baker, you oh, know, uh, because going to. So I mean, it could have been that. I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize anything about that at the so, time. You know. I so just, some some people describe that light as just an orb, uh, a, ball, mm-hmm. a ball of light. Um, some. It looked like more a fireball. Okay. To me, it looked like a fireball, a huge fireball. Mm-hmm. But it, it, but if it, if it was a fireball, because I watched it, I pulled over and I watched it until it disappeared into the mountains over there, uh, going towards Darrington, and because it was coming from like the Bellingham area across, mm-hmm. and um, Whatcom County, and and it, it, if it was a fireball when it when it hit, it would it would have exploded sort of, you know, like if it was a meteor or something like that. So, so it would have caused a fire or something and it did, it did not, it just kind of disappeared. So, yeah. And, but, and, and yeah, that, those are, and, you know, we have uh, bonfires here at Cole's house uh, all the time and mm-hmm. we're always watching the sky and we plan on, we're planning on having some sky mm-hmm. watches here this summer. Well, it's we don't summer. Have bonfires. Now. We have regular fires. Okay, fine. Jesus. Regular fires. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we always see lights. So there, there's always lights that are mysterious. We had one that uh, la- actually last summer that came real slow over us and did it a U. And well, uh, satellites don't make a U. They, they just go straight. So I, it wasn't a satellite. Uh, a lot of people are getting confused by Starlink, and Starlink is a series of white lights in a row. Yeah, that's totally different. I I saw that mm-hmm. too, and I was that was very surprising. Mm-hmm. I love seeing that. <laughs> that but was you, totally you, different than the white horse light. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but you look at so I I was looking at New Fork last night, and that's in the, the National UFO Reporting Center out of Davenport, Washington, and it's a uh, it's an international mm. reporting site. And, you know, we've talked on the show before, I'd say only about 2%, maybe 10% of sightings actually get reported anywhere, whether it's MUFON or New Fork or the, uh, uh, what's George Filer's site? Uh, There's only three. There's George Filer, which is Filer's Files. Uh, You've got New Fork, which is Peter Davenport, and you've got MUFON. That's the only three largely known reporting sites. And only, you know, I've had five sightings myself. I've never reported them because, well, Force Moon Paranormal, we take reports anyway, so why report somewhere else when we do our own thing? Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, that, that tells you right there, there's thousands of people that are seeing things that just aren't talking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you want me to read my uh, neighbor's account here I had pulled up on, that she posted on Facebook? Sure. So it was October 2nd, 2020. It says, we have these little things the locals call the white horse lights. I inadvertently caught a white horse light. Look at the tree line in picture two, three, and four. Kind of cool, guys. Some cool emojis. And then it says, it's not Starlink. They've been around for years, and they don't go in a straight line. I went outside to cast some midnight happy woman spells and my breath was taken away by the beauty of the full moon next to Mars and against the mountains um, and against the mountains in parentheses it says I tried to get the best I could on camera and saw it when reviewing the pictures she says she got the white horse light on on camera and then so I took some screenshots of this I'm going to send it to you so you guys can post it on your page if people want to look at that okay and then I just uh, sent some other uh, pictures of you to you on um, Messenger from some stuff we talked about last time. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Dogman and Bigfoot in the second hour. Um, 
how long do we know the white horse lights have been going on? I mean, uh, is there any native lore from the Soxhawatl tribe that we know of? Not that I know of. Right. Yeah, not that I know of. Not that okay. I really know of. I'm curious. Friend, wow, and you'd have to talk to Dana. Mm -hmm. um, I know Upper Skagit, we won't get any information from them. No, no. Uh, and, and that's the thing that a lot of the tribes are, are so uh, they're they're they keep their their lore to themselves. Uh, yeah. They they won't they won't talk about it um, unless you know somebody in the tribe that will come out. And then uh, even then, talking about it on radio, no. <laughs> well, I would honestly say this is not the year to ask anymore. Huh? This is not the year to ask anymore either. No. No. Why? Because the distress for the white man kind of just went up tenfold. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Mm. And... Yeah, there are stories from um, not that I've heard from not the local tribes here, but from over in um, Black Hills area and my heritage. I have Lakota heritage, and so there's a lot of the elders that speak about it pretty openly out there, and um, you can. Uh, check out the works of the Star Knowledge Conference and uh, Chief Golden Light Eagle. Mm -hmm. He speaks a lot about uh, the uh, Maka Wichakti, or the, the uh, excuse me, that's the, the book that he speaks about. He, the uh, Wichakti Wichohan, which is the Earth Star Way, and then uh, the uh, different star beings out there. So there is there is some indigenous people that will speak about it, but not locally that I've heard. No, the local uh, our our local tribes are are tight lipped about their lore. Um, now yeah, I you'll did, hear some stuff in the Nipi, but yeah. <laughs> I did pull a, a UFO report from Concrete um, <clears throat> that happened May fifteenth of this year, and it happened over Mount Baker. So we're gonna, I'm going to read this, and then we're going to talk about it, because it sounds to me it could have been Starlink, but I don't know. So it was linear white lights on objects slowly floating in the sky, like nothing you'd ever seen, seen before, inexplicable. Four of us were camping at, Mount ba at Baker Lake. We were around the fire, and I looked up at the stars, and I saw a linear formation of lights from behind the trees. Got up to look at it in the clearing. It was fairly close at this time. And it appeared to be floating. It was not making any noise, at least not that I could hear. I could not make sense of it, but called my three friends over who all saw it and were just as taken aback by it, with complete inability to explain what could possibly be. It was fairly large at first and got smaller at it as it moved slowly moved away towards the mountains. It had approximately ten small, square-looking white lights on it. <laughs> Uh, far enough apart to be distinguished from one another, but too close together to possibly be multiple satellites. The lights appeared to rotate. I managed to get a photo, but it was much farther away at this point. It was approximately one minute of all four of us getting a good look at it closer up before, but it moved further over the mountains and was not as easily seen. So, wow. to me it sounds possibly Starlink or a cigar shaped craft with windows well there was just recently a cigar shaped craft that was uh, photographed at Iseti Ranch mm -hmm. down at Mount Adam uh, like last week so maybe it could have been that it could have been What's your thoughts? I, <laughs> I honestly believe that what he saw was Starlink. Okay. Um, but aren't there more than 10? No. Not in all the systems yet. Okay. Friend, that's the thing. So the newest ones were launched uh, last night. Friend, the Falcon X went back up last night. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And every time they launch these, they have 60. Mm -hmm. And every time they break off, mm -hmm. it's 10 at a time. Ah, okay. 
So there's and then they spray. There's possibly your ten lights. And it's a possibility that it was Starlink, and him saying they were rotating, that could be a fact of, uh, I can't remember what it's called. It, it's something to do with your vision, where because of the act of vertigo, when you raise your head into the air, um, the stars will actually look like they're spinning. Mm-hmm. The entire sky will start to look like it's spinning. And that can that could account for that. Right. So it could have been just a straight line of them, but as he kept looking up, they started to rotate. And that's possible. And the, the problem with anyone seeing a UFO, unless it's something that inexplicably is low to the ground. Hey, now, he, he said inexplicable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unless it's low to the ground, if it's in the sky... Mm. With the Starlink coming into fruition, we we can't honestly identify anything now. Yep. All of them well, have you seen Starlink? Yes. Oh, yes. Many times now. And it's a very cool. It didn't sighting. seem to me like that would be the description I would give of it. Because uh, uh, I yeah. saw like maybe ten in a row. Right. And they were all going in the straight line. And that's why it's so confusing with reports now, because now with Starlink going up, a lot of people are seeing Starlink and thinking UFO. The other problem I have with it is he's camping in Washington State. What? How many people <laughs> smoke weed when they camp in Washington oh, State okay. right now? Oh, okay, yeah, true, true. <laughs> it could also be the atmosphere sometimes when the atmosphere, depending on cloud, the clouds or whichever it makes it spin like that too sometimes yeah. a, a cloud right. passes by and it looks when a cloud goes by it makes it look like it's you know blinking or different things that you don't you don't really yeah. see the cloud you're looking uh, focusing more on the on the light so yeah we watched one little uh, twinkle weeks ago that uh, everyone kept saying kept disappearing and oh, and it was, yeah, it was in the you trees. looked at it and said no it's it's going through the trees and yeah. no it's going through a cloud <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, what's your the thought? one I want to hear is when I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The one I want to hear is when the uh, when somebody says it's the moon and it's blinking. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's people like that. Well, the moon's blinking. No, no, no. It's just passing over a cloud or right. something. <laughs> yeah. Or it's, a, it's you know when they do a, a solar eclipse or something. You know, mm-hmm. it's just. Oh wait! <laughs> right. So, it's it's just in the perception of the person, you know. If if any if everything was perfect, they would see that it was straight or not blinking or whatever. if the it, if the weather was just perfect, you know, clear, you know, evening, no rain <laughs> in Washington State. There's a lot of that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, so what's your thoughts, Savella, on? Uh... Uh, and you, so you're on your third year of of the Marble Mount Sasquatch Conference. Um, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Have you had any speakers talk about the Bigfoot alien connection? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Sir. What What we do at our conference is sometimes we have uh, an open forum or a or something like that, and we allow people to get up and speak about their experiences. And we had a couple of people got up and, and talked about uh, uh, Bigfoot, and 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 they first they saw it looked like an orb, and then and then they said, oh no, that's eyes, and no, this and that, and and um, one gentleman says there's a connection between aliens and Bigfoot, and he. He honestly believes that 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 there's a that that Bigfoot was put here by aliens, and uh, so and so, and we have him, and he's probably going to be at this one as well. The same guy, he comes around all the time. So okay, we'll definitely have to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. <laughs> your, what, what's your thoughts about locally? Locally? Uh, yeah. So, Big, so. Bigfoot locally. Bigfoot locally. Yeah, oh so, yeah, we. So have you have you ever heard stories of uh, of local reports with Bigfoot uh, being connected to an orb? 
with it with a UFO? Yeah. Uh, no, no. This this gentleman is not from not from our area. He comes in from. I think he said it's like swim or someplace. You know, I mean, he's not in in the Cascades. He's okay. more out. But I mean, you know, so. He's in the Olympics. He, but he, yeah, but he travels all over. Right. He travels, and and he and that's what he says. He says there's a connection, and just like just like they say that there's a connection between Bigfoot and Dogman, and Bigfoot and aliens, and Bigfoot and the little people. You know, mm. different. Every everybody has a story that they tell that's a little bit different than than before. Now, Dr. Ali, when he when he speaks, and he did a lot of his research and things up in Canada and and Alaska, and he's a professor from a from a uni- the university in Alaska, and he he talks about it all the time, and he's going to be here speaking too. Excellent. In in August. Yeah. Okay. So right. everything is connected. I I think that. Whatever's on this earth was was here and put here, and just because a lot of people don't see them or hear of different things that's going on, doesn't mean that they're not here. <laughs> you know, well, I, aliens, yeah, uh, whatever it is. I fully believe Bigfoot here. My dad has been trying to convince me for years that Bigfoot are in Saskatchewan, Canada, and I. I mm-hmm. There's one tree in Saskatchewan. They all share it. I don't understand where the hell <laughs> <laughs> they are. They all hide They are the truth. <laughs> well, they sure blend into the. They blend into the forest. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I mean, they know that there. you're there before you even know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Fran, it's just you know. confusing to me sometimes with some of the things that, like, a lot of the stories they make sense. Mm-hmm. But then you get some that just irk me. Well, you know, <laughs> when, when, when we moved here, uh, when we moved to Concrete, anyway, uh, we had a neighbor in the in the first house we moved to on First Street, and he put a bowl of milk and honey out for Bigfoot. I've never heard this, uh, but mm-hmm. he, he firmly believed that if he didn't put this milk and honey out for Bigfoot, that Bigfoot would invade his house. So we thought, okay, that's mm-hmm. just a fluke. But then we heard the same the same story from a guy in Rockport. That, yes, you put out a bowl of milk and honey on your porch, and it's for Bigfoot. Uh, so, have you ever heard of this? Me? No. Yeah. The the now we have a lady here that's going to be speaking, and she used to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, mm-hmm. and she would leave them out, and um and they would come. Then um there's a gentleman here that lives here in town that uh, he never wants he doesn't want people to know. I know him, but he doesn't want other people to know him. That he puts out candy bars and apples, and um. But the Bigfoot lives off of nature, so they eat like berries and and uh, mushrooms and grubs and you know things like that. So, so the the best thing to put out, if if you want to put out, is apples. And what you do is you uh, put them in a a bag and you hang them from a branch at least ten feet high. And they will, and and you can also put a jar of peanut butter, but you have to peel that label off of the top of it when you put the jar in there, because they can't, they probably could tear the the aluminum thing that's on there. But you put like a can, a uh, bottle of peanut butter and some apples in a bag, and you hang it in a tree ten feet, and they will come, and they will open the bag, take the apples and the peanut butter, and leave the bag there. And sometimes they'll eat the peanut butter because I have one person that I know that uh, the jar was still there and there was a perfect thumbprint in the peanut butter on the jar. Oh, that's cool. Of, I think that's of, way better and than they, milk and honey. Well, you, you know, milk and honey to me, you leave that out for the fae, not for Bigfoot. 
What if Whole Foods <laughs> lactose intolerant? Well, now, now you got <laughs> oh, now all, all be, over the place. Now he's going to be pissed off at you. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Slim Jim. Uh, uh, somebody, but, somebody said they did leave Slim Jims, but they don't like them. <laughs> oh, I don't think they wouldn't like touch them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like Slim Jims either. Uh, That's so greasy. <laughs> that would hurt him so bad. Right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, and so... I, I know, I'm sure you've heard of gifting sites. Gifting sites are where you go up into a uh, very known hot mm-hmm. spot of Bigfoot and you basically mm-hmm. leave uh, food or a marble. A marble. They love marbles. They love Hot Wheels. Yep. Uh, yep. They, they remind me of raccoons in that they love anything shiny. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've heard of people putting CDs up and uh, hanging CDs from tree branches. Uh, mm-hmm. You know anything shiny, and uh, they'll come and they'll actually leave you a gift. Sometimes uh, there's, mm-hmm. a, and I've told this story before, but uh, our our prior Bigfoot guy uh, on the team uh, told us about a, a guy that went up, I believe, in the Marlboro area, uh, in the middle of nowhere, and he played his guitar for hours, and he left. Mm-hmm. And he went back the next day, and there was a pile of flowers left right where he had been playing his guitar. They love music. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can't wait for the. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about your speakers that are coming uh, in August. Okay. Um, well, the the conference is August twenty eighth and twenty ninth. So it's a Saturday and Sunday here in Marble Mount. That's at the Marble Mount Community Center. And we have uh, four speakers. We have t- uh, two speakers on Saturday and two speakers on Sunday. The two speakers on Saturday is Tom Sweet, and he, um, Native American, he came from Canada, but now he's down in the Snohomish uh, tribes. And um, he, he performs, or he does a story, he tells stories, but with his wife, and his wife comes in the traditional Sasquatch uh, type costume, and um, and she like looks around and everything, and and their beliefs are Sasquatch comes and throws uh, the babies or the little children in the basket in the back, you know, things, and and then, but what they they don't do that. They're going to do a special children's program on Sunday just for the children because we allow uh, 12 and under free for the children. And what they do is they, in the basket that she has on her back, she is gifts and they're going to toss those out to the children for, oh, cool. for gifts and stuff. Um, and the, in the afternoon, he, he tells his own story and it's, it's, he has permission from the tribe to be able to, to, to talk about it. So that's, I let him do that. Mm-hmm. And then um, in the afternoon, Judy Carroll's going to speak. Now, Judy Carroll is an amazing woman. Um, uh, she actually has a teacher in Sasquatch, and his name is Colby. And, and he is the one that said that she would be allowed to talk at my conference, but he, he gives her permission to talk about Sasquatch because a lot of the people that, um, have stories to tell, they can tell the story because they saw Sasquatch or, or things like that. She talks about the communication and having a teacher. So that's what she, her, her, her talk is about. Okay. Um, Exciting. Um, Rob, uh, Rob Alley, Dr. Rob Alley, is a professor, and he studied um, uh, them, investigated them more in Alaska and Canada, and he, um, he, he'll he be talking about that, and also he'll probably tell you about um, when he was camping, because <laughs> he travels around too, uh, investigating and going to hot spots, and uh, he was out and he had to go to the restroom, and just as he was ready to go to the bathroom, one stood right in front of him. So that was one that he'll probably be telling that story as well. 
And Tom Cantrell now, he's been doing it, um, investigating and things like that. He used to be in the forestry, and he, and he knows, I mean, he, amazing about every plant and every tree in the forest. And, um, and he, uh, when he was very young, um, he saw his first Sasquatch, and it continued on for, um, for many years, and he's been doing it for like 60, 60 years. He has not been doing it the last couple of the few years because he's been sick and things so um and he he has he has actually written 13 books on sasquatch and and it tells the story of every sighting or every encounter that he's had and um dr ali's written a couple of books and judy has not written any books at all and um and tom uh he he makes he has uh, he'll have a a table here for he makes all this beautiful artwork and things so that's more what he's doing instead of uh, writing books and things so okay. those are the speakers that we're going to have Excellent. along with uh, along with we always have a Sasquatch calling contest so that and um, the one and we have the speakers that's actually seen or heard Sasquatch. They're the judges, and they um, tell us who does the best call of, of Sasquatch, you know, like how they think that they're going to get him to come in and talk to them. And and they get a, a gift and stuff that's, of course, Sasquatch-related. Uh, Sasquatch but um, we we have a, a young girl here in Marble Mount, I'm telling you, she, I, I won't say your name because she's under 10 years old, but... Um, she has won it the last couple of times. I mean, she is good, and she's Native American. She's just a darling little girl, and she she gets up there and she competes with the adults, and she can really scream it out. I'll tell you. Oh, right on. So that's a fun part. And, so, uh, and you we have, want everybody to come. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and you have uh, yeah. Avengers coming. Yes. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Um. Uh. One is from concrete, actually. So we have we have a food vendor. He he's he's Native American, and he's going to do um, the, you know the, the the luncheon that that we have because we break for lunch, and um, everything is a fried dough, uh, fried dough tacos, uh, fried dough uh, hamburgers. Uh, you know, just the regular. You know, uh, they make a fried dough, strawberry shortcake, fry bread. and and fry bread. Yes, everything, and they do it um, at all the powwows and everything. And so we got them, and they're going to come up here and do that. And then we also have a, a it's called Kona Ice, and he's 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 oh. been here a couple of times, and he's going to have like the 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 icy drinks and things yep. and stuff oh, like cool. that. The yeah, and the um. Other vendors, we are going to have uh, Sasquatch the Legend, and they travel all over. And uh, Sasquatch the Legend, he uh, makes all our T-shirts because all the um, all the volunteers, the helpers, to the you know ticket takers uh, help because I always have like a continental breakfast type thing for the early birds that come, and um, so we have that, and so I. They all are in the T-shirt, so everybody can know. And then he sells, of course, the T-shirts, and and it says Marble Mount. Like last year, it said Marble Mount 2020. Well, this year it'll say Marble Mount 2021, mm. and uh, and it has a Sasquatch on it and things. He he'll be here. He has a lot of neat things like that, and as well, um, the Singletons. They're out of uh, concrete. They're actually at the um, at the garage, the uh, swap meet. Or okay. you have there in concrete. Yep. They're there every every time, and they make metal art, metal art Sasquatch. You know the cuts and metal metal works and things like that. They come every year, and and we have a couple more. Um, uh, Rowdy Sasquatch is going to be here, and um, the Millers are going to be. I mean, I can't think of all of them right now, and I don't have my paper right in front of me. So, but yeah, we have all the, and then Tom, who's one of the speakers and his wife's going to be doing the performance for the children on Sunday. He's going to have his uh, art 
Um, I still need to talk to uh, to Mike Vale, who has the museum down in uh, Cedar Woolley, mm -hmm. down there at the, uh, the Sasquatch Museum, right on 20, yeah, and yeah, right by the high school. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, he's in yeah, Burlington. He, Burlington. <laughs> Burlington, yeah. And, and I need to uh, talk to him again. He came. He brings a lot of his carved statues and uh of uh, Sasquatch and stuff, but um, I since uh, since the COVID last year, he's his museum's been closed, and and I've been trying to get in touch with him, and and I just have to kind of talk to him, and he'll come. So. Okay. And okay. For Spoon Paranormal, and as for Paranormal Radio, we'll be there as well. Uh, so yes, and definitely, yes, uh, going to be a great time. Uh, I, yes, I, I thank you guys. I do have a question for you. So you you've okay. done you've done this for two years. Uh, have you ever had anyone that just looked at a place show up? Uh, no. I think that everybody that that does come has had some kind of experience with Sasquatch. Or they want to learn more about Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. um, that they, they want to be able to come and know that there's people out there that be, that will believe them, and that's what that's what it's all about. You know that the, the you know you can't force someone to believe, uh, and and some of them some of them won't even talk you know i mean they they'll talk to me but they says you know what i'm not getting up and i'm not going to say anything to anybody else but they scared me when <laughs> when i went out fishing or i was you know hunting or this one gentleman he was in a he was hunting and he was in one of the valleys you know and he said that all of a sudden he saw one coming down at the bottom of the valley and at first he he thought that it might be a deer or something and and then when he saw it he took off and he never went back there to hunt again it scared him so bad and um uh, i just think that you know they're peaceful they're not here to harm you there's some you know, that would so disagree i don't with, there's some that would disagree with that and we'll get into that a little more in the second hour um uh, mm -hmm. so and, and the reason I asked that question is because, uh, so we did uh, the Forest Moon Paracon for five years uh, before, we, uh -huh. uh, before we wrapped it up. And we always had either someone that looked alienish, some claimed they were an alien, or you've got the one in the suit kind of standing in the corner that's either government or, <laughs> yeah, you always got the questionable one that shows up. Which is why I ask if you've ever had anyone that was just out of place, looked kind of ominous. <laughs> and no, that's probably still coming. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that I've uh, thought was out of place was a newspaper person that came. <laughs> they they just wanted to come and report, and they just they had no interest or anything. They just it was their job, you know. And, and they came in and they and they interviewed Tom and they interviewed me and different things and and then it came out in the paper. But you know that's the only one that in the last couple of years. And I've been to other ones too, mm -hmm. and I I I'm amazed at how many people uh, just come. I mean they're and they they're just they they're sitting on the side, you know on on the edge of their seats they're just listening up to every word that every speaker you know uh speaks and things and it's just amazing you know and and then when the speakers actually have photographs that like what i have is i have a pro not a projector but i have the screen and they bring their own videos and show you know well, i saw him here and i saw this one here and you know the pictures and things like that on mm -hmm. the on the screens and stuff so it's, but I've never, uh, so far, <laughs> knock on wood, so far, uh, I have not seen anyone out of place. No. That, that, that's a, that's a, a good thing. Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, uh -huh. the, the more you hear about it, the, the yeah, the, and it depends on what you talk about too, I suppose, uh, cause some of the topics we talk about, uh, or talked about during the Paracon was, uh. Yeah, when it comes to the alien side, uh, you you get a lot more of the uh, 
unwanted interest, I guess you would, you would call it. <laughs> yeah, the looky lose. <laughs> that's what that's yeah. what somebody called them, looky lose. You know, um, there's a difference between a lot of people get, I think, get confused between Bigfoot or Sasquatch or. Uh, you know, out, Yowie or whatever the swamp ape mm-hmm. or whatever the different areas call them, mm-hmm. uh, and dogmen. Now, dogmen you need to be afraid of. Sasquatch you don't. That's just my uh, personal. So I, I think it depends. Uh, I've heard more mm-hmm. uh, aggressive reports from swamp ape, but, you know, like I always say, I, I'd be pissed off too if I had a whole lot of fur and it was 100 degrees with uh, 100% humidity. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> big, big difference in, uh, than, than ours here. Uh, but I've heard, uh, you know, on YouTube, uh, three different reports where Bigfoot was terrifying. Uh, uh, and there, there are some that are, that, that like to argue that, uh, oh, no, Bigfoot's, Bigfoot's. Sorry. Oh, yours is a lot That's what, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we have a volunteer fire department yeah, and, and awesome. here in Marble Mount and so that's there that's the sirens going off uh, calling for the fire department to come yeah, or paramedics. Is, probably yeah. a, probably uh, a okay. firework. Sorry, this, a bit, sorry. On this side of the river, you can't hear it as well as that. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, it'll stop because it goes only four. It goes four times. Yeah. So, yep. It's done. <laughs> so, Harmony, would you agree that, that you have to be scared of dogmen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would not want to mess with dogman, and I'm very thankful that I was in my car when I had my sighting. And see, that yeah. that's what's interesting. We'll get into that uh, again a lot more in the second hour, because... I want to hear about that because you're the first person in Washington State I've ever ever heard a dogman report. Uh, you don't you hear about dogman in the Midwest and in the South, you don't hear about dogman in Washington State. You really hmm. don't. No, uh, I did a bunch of research trying to see if there were some similar, similar sightings too, and um, not a whole lot here. Uh, have Have you ever heard any dogman reports in uh, in our area, Savilla? Uh, no, no, I haven't. But the people have talked about the dogman when they've done their travels, you know, for in, investigations and things. So, but in Washington State, I haven't. Um, a lot of the the area, which is in Marble Mountain, there's been a lot of sightings. A lot of people here have. I mean, they literally come up to their homes and things like that. There, um, when they when. I, there's a gentleman here that um, has a family that comes to his home, um, especially in the spring, and uh, comes to his home and, and calls him to come outside and stuff like that. But um, he, you know, he's, he's not afraid of them. I mean, they try to communicate, and and he just, he's he, he's fine with, with that. But he talked about... Um, how friendly they are and how loving they are and mm-hmm. and if they're and if they're juveniles they like to play tricks with you like they'll throw rocks at you because they don't know that a rock's going to hurt you they <laughs> that's how they play you know so right. they you know so a lot of people take it uh, as aggressive when it's usually the juvenile uh, bigfoot that are just playing with you mm-hmm. I, I or trying think... to play with you but, but I think it depends on the size of the rock. If it's a pebble or a baseball side, okay, yeah, they, they're playing, and it, it usually doesn't hit you. If it's a bowler that's going to crush you, yeah, you're in his territory. Yeah. I, I do yeah. think they're territorial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do think right. they're protective of their young, uh, like uh, yeah. similar to bears um, yep. or cougars. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm, yep. And I think that's where your and aggression it comes on, from. Yeah, and it depends on their your intentions when you're Absolutely. entering their territory as well. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You, you that's know, correct. Uh, I, I was told before I got into the Bigfoot side, because I've been in the paranormal for 30, well, since 1990. I've only been in the Bigfoot side since 20, I want to say 14 it was. Uh, 
uh, and that was my first mm. encounter. Uh, and I've never seen mm. a Bigfoot, but I've seen the tracks, uh, and I've uh, ha I've had I interaction with them with tree knocks. I've, I've knocked on trees and had them respond back. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, I was told, oh, if you've got a firearm, they're not going to show themselves uh, because they know your intent. I was deer hunting, and I had a firearm. But at the same time, I do mm -hmm. think they know your intent. If they know you're not there to kill them or to, to be aggressive towards them, you can have a gun. I, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't go in the mountains without a gun. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and that's for... <laughs> That's if I have a bear encounter, a cougar encounter, or a tweaker encounter. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I honestly think that depends on whether you're brandishing it or not. That's true too. That's yeah. True too. Yep. True. But, I mean, I was carrying true. a 308. I was deer hunting, and the, he still locked. But was it on your back mm -hmm. or was it in your hands? In my hands. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there. Uh, they're uh, smart. Uh, they know what you're there for. Right. Uh, and it, it was it was really my first time, and I knew exactly what it was when I heard it. Uh, but we were walking through a trail, and we we came pretty much to a... We couldn't go any farther because it was going down a cliff pretty much. So we turned around, and we started walking back, and we heard the knock. And I looked at my buddy, and I was, oh, my God, that was a Bigfoot knock. There's no, there's no other way around that. Cause I've had people say, "Oh, it's wood, it's a woodpecker." No, I, I, I think I know the difference between a woodpecker <laughs> and a bigfoot knock. I, there's a big difference. Uh, and so we, we dropped our packs and we walked back. And, you know, it was pretty open uh, woods. Uh, there was no real place to hide, unless he jumped down the cliff. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see tracks because it was all pine needle. So there was no, you know, there, there's no. Mm -hmm. way to make a track at Pine Needle. Uh, and we looked around for about five minutes. We went back to our packs, put our packs on, took a step to walk away, and he knocked again. It was like, you son of a bitch. Come on, show yourself. And, well, yeah. And we left. <laughs> but that was, that was my first encounter, and that, that actually got me into the Bigfoot side, because uh, FMP always did uh, uh, the severe haunting attacks and alien abduction, that kind of stuff. Uh, we didn't really explore mm -hmm. the Bigfoot side until 2014. That's when we started the, the Bigfoot and cryptid side. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's usually what happens when everybody gets involved, when they see when they see something or, or, or uh, witness something or maybe their spouse or their best friend told them, hey, man, look, I drew this, I saw this last night, you know, and sketch something out and and that and they go oh really you know and they and they're not going to you know say up oh, there it goes again so nobody responded so they set it off again guys, come on <laughs> yeah, yeah well, and, and that's the same thing down here they don't respond and uh, they have to tone them again and uh if they don't respond they'll tone rockport yeah and rockport will have yeah. to come up and then it'll be grassmere um, but you know, you, we, we get asked, what are the hot spots? Well, I don't disclose hot spots because I don't want everybody and their brother going, uh, going up looking, but honestly, everywhere up here is a hot spot. I don't think there's anywhere in East Skagit County that's really not, uh, people have had encounters from South Skagit Highway all the way up to New Halem and beyond. Rainy Pass is another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Pacific Correct. Crest Trail. Correct. Darrington, mm -hmm. the, the Cascades in general, yeah, are there. There's just really nowhere they're not found. I know right, anywhere mm -hmm. where there's dense Do forest. What's a hot mm -hmm. spot? Have any place near Birdsview? Just go camp out at the end of the lane. <laughs> She'll come out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's my mother-in-law's house. By the way. Oh. <laughs> she looks like Bigfoot sometimes. So Arnold, uh, well, they, they, we, we I'm have, sorry. We, we'll, it's okay. We only have a couple minutes before our first break. But Arnold, uh, are there any, uh, you know, in, in the in the twenty years you were a, a, a park ranger, is there any parks that you haven't heard of a Bigfoot report? Oh, a few, but 
they're mainly like in town type stuff, uh, not out towards the hills. Uh, let me check. Uh, after 25 plus years, I would say about half the parks, maybe a little less than half the parks I was at, there were sightings or verbal stuff heard from Bigfoot. Right. But my biggest one, the most active, was my last one I was at there in Mason County, the southwest corner of Mason County. And uh, you've actually hmm. you've actually heard Bigfoot calls, haven't you? I've heard. I've had stuff, big things thrown at me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I've heard Bigfoot calls. Um, we've heard knocks in the woods. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would imagine Birch Basin mm-hmm. Park doesn't get very many. No. no, no, no. <laughs> well, they got the refiners right there too. Uh, well, and that's just it. But yeah. it, further back in around, you probably could, but not out of that park. Um, where I worked at um, on the John Wayne Trail, now it's called the Cascade to Palouse Trail. It's a linear trail that goes from west to east. Yeah, there was some stuff around there. Um, what about but, Lopez? No. I always wonder because I have heard. There's other parks. now. There's other weird things that happen out there, but nothing like Bigfoot. Um, well, you've got UFO reports from Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you go out there and sit on a beach at night, and you could probably see most anything. Right. <laughs> I mean, the light, the sky's <laughs> right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, no Bigfoot. Uh, but I do have to take it back down when I was at my last park at Schaefer State Park. Uh, down in the town, little town of Satsup that ain't nothing, there was um, a house that a Bigfoot like broke into and made his way through and then went back out. But yeah, but that again, you're sitting right in that area. You're sitting not that far away from the base of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, no, um, otherwise... It has to be pretty much where I was around wooded parks or areas that were had stuff where you could easily hide. Yeah, that type mm-hmm. of area. Okay, mm-hmm. and on that note, let's take our first break. And when we come back, more on Bigfoot. Okay. You are listening to S4 on Spreaker.com.
Welcome back to Espero with your host, Eric Cooper. And welcome back to S4 as we are talking about the mysteries of the Cascades. So, we're carrying on our topic of Bigfoot uh, the second hour. And we're going to cross it over with missing people. Because, you know, no. so, so we have mistress... Uh, what? Shithead, you promised us Dogman. Oh, Dogman. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about Dogman? No, 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 no. You've done you this did. for two shows to us. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Let's hear about Dogman. Harmony? <laughs> Maybe Dogman's taking people. Harmony, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. So, tell us about your encounter. So, uh, let's take you back like 20 years ago. And my mom and I, I was driving in my little... Uh, Ford Escort, um, little car, going down Highway 530, going eastbound towards Barrington, towards Whitehorse. Uh, my mom and I were visiting my godmother, and we were going around the uh, Oso S curve, and all of a sudden, this large, hairy thing came out in the road, probably about, you know, uh, 50 yards away to right in, you know, the very distance of the headlights. And then it saw our headlights and got up on all four or all two, uh, got up from all fours to its hind legs. And it like looked directly at our vehicle and hissed like, you know, like when it showed its fangs and its little shorter kind of uh, arms came up with these really big claws and, um, it kind of like showed its uh, fangs and claws at the same time. And it was really like quite frightening. And then all of a sudden, like in before, you know, cause my car, I kind of slowed down, but I was still going quite fast on that highway. I believe it's like 55 mm-hmm. and around those curves, it's probably around 45, 40. And that's about what I was going. Cause I'm pretty careful on those roads, especially with, you know, my mom in the car. But, um, so we were, yeah, uh, so we were quite startled, needless to say, and it got back down on it, uh, all fours and bounded away. Like it was literally running into the road and it got up on its hind legs and then it went right back down and bounded off away. Um, and it was going, um, from the, I guess it would be the south. To the north, uh, towards the um, Mount Higgins, I guess I think it is, and um, it was yeah, it was moving fast. It was very, it had a mission, and we were just in its way momentarily. And I'm so thankful that we were in the car, and yeah, we we were driving, and then we were like, "Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you You're like? Wow, you know?" And my hair on my arms and the back of my neck was standing up and she was too and she was like you know she does this thing where she shows me her arm hair standing up she's like oh my gosh and you know we're like explaining what we saw to each other we're like wow we really did see the same thing you know because it was just so uh out of any frame of reference we ever had and we were on our way to like I said my godmother's house who lived out there and what in the very base of white horse on mine mine road and um, we get there and we tell her about it. And um, I've spoken about this before. They, she called it a Wendigo. And she goes, that really sounds like something, you know, that the, the, the elders call the Wendigo. And so for years, I thought that that's what it was, is, is uh, something called a Wendigo. And back then, there wasn't really ways to research on the Internet the same way as there is now. So there was like a few little references about a Wendigo. And, and that didn't really match what I had seen, um, the explanations of it. However, I could see why she would maybe say that. Like, there was a similar similarities, right? And so, mm-hmm. um, so anyway, that's what I thought it was for years. And then all of a sudden, I saw the Harry Potter, uh, I think it's the third one, where Lupin turns into the, the werewolf. And 
I had to show it to my mom because I, that was the closest thing I'd ever seen to the depiction. And it looked just so similar the way it like brought up, it got on its hind legs and like hissed and like snarled and uh, showed its teeth and its claws. And, and uh, she was like, wow, that is the closest depiction. And that was, you know, I think what Harry Potter's like 15, over 15 years ago, back when that came out. So, yeah. um, that's when I first started put the piece together. It was a werewolf and then, or some kind of thing that was wolf, you know, dog man or werewolf something. And then they just started to put the together dog man reference resources and stories and archives all over the internet in the past five or so years, maybe a little longer, but, and that's when I really started to identify and understand that what I saw was dog man. Right, because uh, Dogman hasn't really been talked about within the cryptozoology circles other than in the last eh, 10-ish years. He's not really accepted in half of them. Yeah. Right. But he's he been he's been more talked about, though, as far as a Dogman creature goes within the last five to ten Only years. Only in the United States. True. Yeah. True. For anywhere else, they even consider the sightings that they hear about in the United States lichen. as lichen. Right. The, they don't accept the idea of Dogman, and honestly, neither do I. <laughs> I believe they are all... <laughs> right. Um, I honestly think creature. that they... That is a human perspective taking something that they didn't want it to be mm -hmm. and turning it into their own thing because that's less scary. True. Yeah. Yeah, there is stories of shapeshifters all over the world, however, that do shapeshift into beasts. So... Yeah. Right. That's a curious thing that I kind of dived into for a minute. Uh, so it looked canine. Did it have a oh, uh, absolutely, like a, yeah, a, a dog-shaped head? Because uh, we know Bigfoot doesn't run on all fours. He's he's a humanoid. Yeah, this this to... was definitely not Sasquatch. And I sent some pictures over, and um, we'll get those posted up, and you can kind of see the little drawings. Oh, so there was a piece where. We could, when we got back home, we had gone into separate rooms and drew, drawn what we'd seen mm -hmm. just to kind of verify what we'd seen was the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe as kind of a little uh, thing to reference back upon, you know, and telling the story. So um, it, was, it was pretty similar, like when you see these two drawings, you know, pretty amazing. And it was definitely kind of wolf, like dog-like, you know, especially how it was moving across the, you know, across the field as it bounded away. It was like not a bear. It was not a, you know, I've seen a bear too and in, in, out in the wilderness and that was not a bear and it was not anything like the descriptions or, you know, stories or sightings I've seen in Sasquatch. So and that's why we, when we had described it, uh, she, this woman had called it a Wendigo because it was, you know, like a Wendigo is often a, a dark shaman that had uh, done uh, murdered, done very, very bad deeds and usually including murder to become a shapeshifter mm -hmm, yes. and it becomes nearly death and it like is a, like a hollow and this, that's not what we saw. That's why when I've seen these like different correspondences of these Wendigos all across the board, it wasn't, I was like, no, that's not it. But the dog man really resonated. You know, like when you get the truth bumps, right? You're like, whoa, that is what we saw, you know? Mm -hmm. My rational mind has tried to explain it away and it still comes back. So, uh, when you, okay, I'm going to get into it a little bit here. Uh, short hair or long hair? Um, both. I guess it had, like, long hair on its back, and then, like, its, like, chest and, like, hands and, like, face were not as so, furry. So, like, a Tim but it, type, with the long back stripe and then, um, the rest kind of, of yeah, but, but the chest was, like, very muscular, like, really muscular. Okay. Like, it wasn't, you know, it was, like, it kind of humanoid chest now when, when it I, got up on its hind, hind legs. When it bounded away, um, let me know if you don't understand what I mean, but did it have a parallel step or a perpendicular step? Do you know what I mean? 
Okay, so explain that a little bit. Would that be like okay? So a parallel step running like a wolf. One front and back leg go at the same time, and the um, and then the other side. Oh yeah, the right. Particular is when the front ones go mm. and then the back ones go. That is you know I believe it was the alternating. It was alternating. I believe, I believe so. You know, I haven't thought about that before. Um, like a human. It was like, yeah, it was like really fast, and it was like, gosh, what? Yeah, I sh- I'll ask my mom what she remembers of too. Canines, um, when they run, if someone takes a uh, still photo of them, mm-hmm. they're and they their catch back them legs in the air. Are... Their back aids are fo- legs are forward. Yeah, their front paws are behind them, mm-hmm. and so that's mm-hmm. perpendicular. When uh, a cheetah walks, mm-hmm. it's one side front and back go, and then the other mm. side go, okay. then the other side, then the other side. A bear is crossed. It's front and back of one, front and or front and back of the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was kind of like that, but I'm not. They're not positive. So here's the thing. Hmm. I didn't make note of that that aspect, but that's a good... I'll ask my mom what she remembers and see if she has a recollection of that. Being the mixture of dog and man, that would make sense. Right. Because... Yeah, right. ...perpendicular, whereas humans are parallel. Mm-hmm. Mm. And if good you point. actually watch someone walk, usually their arms follow their legs, even though our arms aren't touching the ground. Right. It's just well, that, That's how you march. Yeah. <laughs> your, like, your, your right hand is moving with your right leg. <laughs> your left hand is moving with your left leg. Because it is the most <clears throat> efficient way. Mm-hmm. And it actually is. That is the fastest way for the our bone structure to run. Yeah, it had these weird inverted kind of back legs when it stood on its hind legs. It was really interesting. And both my mom and I drew that in our pictures. Kind of like a, like they're bent at the knees a little bit. With it in the like back. They had like but, two knees, like a big ankle that mm-hmm. was up toward higher, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, there's a difference between the dog man and like Bigfoot when you're comparing because big Bigfoot is more walks up and down and they step in front of each other so it's not like if you see human tracks it's like one foot here and then one foot over here and one foot you know like Mm -hmm. back and forth where bigfoot is straight that it's in front of each other and it's usually like six feet so it's like six Mm -hmm. feet here's one footprint there now and and it's and Bigfoot's hand looks like a human hand, you know, of, of course, bigger. Where a dog man uh, has like three three fingers, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like it doesn't have the thumb and the and the small pinky finger. It's almost like three fingers with with like long, razor sharp claws type thing. Exactly. And, and the and the and the feet uh, look more like a a, a huge long long dog a long uh, like a dog's foot almost but it's long you know uh, a dog's foot's like the little paws are you know like the the one it, it's like it has a thumb and stuff but not on dog man it's like real long and skinny and that kind of thing yeah kangaroo kind of type of situation almost. yeah you know what's funny yeah. that you said that so there is a kangaroo farm out on 530. Right. And that was my rational mm-hmm. mind was like, oh, is there ever a kangaroo that escaped, right? For for a, a brief moment, I was entertaining this thought that maybe it was just a kangaroo, right? Because that's what no. you kind of want to do with these situations. <laughs> and sure. nope, it wasn't. I went to the kangaroo farm. I looked at these kangaroos. It was not a kangaroo for sure. And Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, literally like up close and personal with kangaroos and it wasn't a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. And I also, and they don't have, they don't have fangs. No, no. And I asked if there was ever any that had, you know, gotten loose 
And he said, mm-hmm. yeah, one, like, you know, a year ago, and it went into the neighbor's pasture. And that was as far <laughs> as it got. So I was like, yeah. okay, well, you know, it wasn't that. Because I was like, are you sure? Mm-hmm. Not like 20 years ago? And he's like, no. <laughs> like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, when your rational mind does the research and it just doesn't add up, but the other clues do, you really, like, come to something, mm-hmm. you know, and certain conclusions mm-hmm. within your within your knowing of what things were. Now, Arnold, And that's the same way with Bigfoot, huh? too. Yes. When well, they I, see Bigfoot... I, go ahead. I'm, I'm curious if you've ever heard any dog band reports in the state parks. None to my knowledge. The only thing that I have heard is dog man was sent here for a purpose, and that was to get rid of Bigfoot. Oh, that'd, oh. Be, an, that'd be an interesting fight. That would be. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's why that they're trying, and that's why a lot uh, you might see a dog man and not a Bigfoot because the Bigfoot is trying to escape or something from dog man because they know that they're here to kill him. I wonder. I wonder if that's why there's a a bad big Bigfoot that comes in with hellhounds. Mm. Right. So go ahead and tell us. Yeah. That, go go ahead and tell us that story, Arnold. Um. Well, I uh, when I was living on, we were living on a property with a uh, Native American gentleman. Um, we had several encounters with Bigfoot around on his property, and then one night, um. There was a different type of feeling, different type of smell type thing out in, on his property. And when they looked at, you could see like these dogs' uh, eyes looking at you through the woods and stuff. Uh, totally different, totally different feeling than when the, we called it the good Bigfoot was around. And when you, when he would shoot at, these dogs to show them away. They wouldn't run. They would just stand there and look at you. Or they'd just back off into the woods a little bit and then come right back out. Uh, so that meaning when he'd shoot at coyotes, they would take off running, wouldn't be back for a while. Same. Uh, other dogs, same thing. These dogs would like stand there and just back off a little bit and then come right back out. Um, and he had said that um, through his Native American and stuff, that legend was there was two Bigfoots, a good one and a bad one, and the bad one always came around with hellhounds. Um, so it was a couple nights later. We were out on this property, same type of situation, and we were we could see some large type dark figure off by the tree line and then these dogs and he fired a shot towards the dogs and I'm I was for sure he hit one one of the dogs but we went out after he had shot kind of to an area where they were standing and we couldn't find anything no blood no nothing it was like they just vanished Mm -hmm. so that's when um, we were out if we um, he would We'd be walking on his property, and we, if we ever got a weird type feeling, or I, I even got really scared one night and had a like a feeling of doom and stuff. And he looked, we looked at each other, and he goes, "We need to leave. They're here." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that's when we left. And he goes, "Yeah, that was the bad big foot starting to come through." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, and they'll I, let I, you know if that. if. Um. Sorry, guys. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Savelle. No. Oh, I was just going to say, they'll let you know. I mean, people get, the, people get uh, just like, just like uh, the hair standing on your, on your, up on your arms and stuff. Yeah. Um, if you go into an area where they don't want you there, you will know they don't want you there. Exactly. And they don't even have to really do anything or mm-hmm. yell at you or scream or, <laughs> or bang on the, uh, you know, do wood knocks. They don't have to. Do, you know, and you know, I'm, I'm out of here. Exactly. You just, mm-hmm. Yeah, you get that feeling and you leave. Yeah. 
What are you going to say, Cole? That's true. So, in the chat room, PBR says, Google Stealth Cam and tell me why there are no pictures of the elusive, elusive Bigfoot. I'll wait. <laughs> well, first of all, when a, the government, who for 20 years had major issues finding any freaking grow-up for marijuana with a $10,000 <laughs> camera, I'm pretty much sure a $100 one-off Amazon's not going to freaking work. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, man. We we don't know enough about them, first of all, mm-hmm. to know whether I, those infrared cameras would actually work on them. They don't work on everything. Mm-mm. Friend. You, well, you don't know what kind of a, a, a heat range or what kind of a temperature range a Bigfoot's well, yeah. got. Cold, warm-blooded, you don't right. know anything exactly. about their anatomy. <laughs> so... <you> know, <laughs> And how many bears has a stealth cam caught? How many cougars has a stealth cam caught? Oh, oh um, quite a few, but only at the bar. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I have pictures of I have pictures of that of cougars and and mm-hmm. bear that I actually took that from my little cheap cheap can and I just took pictures. I mean, they it, they let you. T- I mean, I had one laid down in a bear, mama, mama bear and her baby cub, and she just laid down on my front lawn and just put her leg, arms out, her legs out in front and legs out in back and just laid there so that her little, her cub could, um, could play. Mm. And then the, the cub was just climbing the trees and going all around and I'm like taking all these pictures and she just laid there. So, and, um, and Sasquatch is nothing like a bear. Everybody says, oh, it's a bear. No, it's no. not. And don't <laughs> not, get me wrong. It's not going to lay in your backyard. <laughs> Those stealth cams are awesome <laughs> cameras. They are really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. But even some of the world's mm-hmm. best photographers that have been taking pictures of some of the most world's dangerous animals say, say the fact that with half of these animals, including jaguars mm-hmm. and tigers, if they don't want to be seen, they won't mm-hmm. buy anything. Nope. That's true. They will that's find true. ways to hide behind everything. That, mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. And you won't find and, them, and you, you won't know they're on you until they're on you, and your neck is in their that, mouth. All right. That's true. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, uh, you know, we've talked about this on the show before. Uh, how many game camps have been out, and they, they'll actually they'll see the coyote and the rabbit and the raccoon and uh, you know every, everything's right there and then all of a sudden the camera goes white yep mm-hmm. and you'll yep. hear bigfoot noise in the background yep. and as soon as bigfoot leaves the camera goes back to normal it's not a malfunction of the camera sure. it's a malfunction of the yeah. environment and the energy around the camera that yeah. is caused yeah, by the presence of bigfoot malfunction yeah exactly correct so if you and, and i've been in the woods and <laughs> My camera, my camera's battery. I just charged it up, and my camera's battery just all of a sudden. There's no, no battery. Yeah. I did it just the other day. I was out in, I was at my campsite, and I had my camera there, and I was just, I was just taking random pictures of the trees. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the uh, the camera, the battery light started flashing, saying "dead battery, dead battery." So I turned the camera off, put it in, brought it to. I was going to charge it up in the in the truck, and I turned it back on to charge it, and and it was a full full battery. But when I was out taking the pictures, it went dead. Was there any presence of a bigfoot that you heard? Nope, nope. But he was there. I could feel it. (laughs) See, and and that's. I could feel. That, that's the thing. It's the same thing with haunting sites. You'll go into a, a, a haunted location and, yeah. and, and your battery. So it's the same energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Last, last week we went up to Monte Cristo and the same thing happened with my camera. It actually mm-hmm. would not take video. It would take like mm-hmm. these five second clips of video and then it would go camera stop recording and then shut down. And then I had it on a full, I had charged it overnight and had a, a full bar like, or all the bars on the thing, and it drained out, like, really quickly. Mm-hmm. One of it our locals it. here in Cape Horn got a really good video at 1.30 in the morning on his uh, security camera. For, and they're small, like, in actuality, 
but he got spiders going across the oh, camera. Oh, yeah. And it looks like B-movie B monster stuff. Like, it's absolutely hilarious. They are. <laughs> they look so huge on this camera. Yeah, he posted it in the upper room. <laughs> Did he? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that's been the fight within the paranormal community in general for years, many, many years. Uh, between the Bigfoot community and the paranormal in general community, you've got the uh, the ghost hunters that don't see Bigfoot or cryptids in general as a paranormal issue, or aliens or UFOs as a paranormal issue for that matter, when in all reality, they are all paranormal. It's the mm -hmm. same energy. <coughs> if, if mm -hmm. It's the same energy that drains batteries in your cameras. It's the same energy that drains uh, mm -hmm. uh, batteries in your uh, your micro recorders. I mean, it, there, there's no there's no question that it they're all part of the paranormal field. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's your thoughts about Bigfoot kidnapping humans? Are you asking me? <laughs> uh, anyone. There's a few I wish he would. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> me too. So <laughs> um, I've heard stories about Bigfoot taking people, but it most of the time, it's like, um, I heard this one story where a, a Bigfoot, a, a young lady fell and got hurt in the woods, and Bigfoot took the girl until she was, and, re, and she recuperated. She was gone like two or three weeks, and then the parents came back to the house, and there she was sitting on the steps in, at the house, and she didn't have a broken leg anymore. I mean, it was, you know... And she she said it was that she lived with the, with Bigfoot, or she didn't say it was Bigfoot. She just said that it was. And um, then there was another story that I heard um, where they took a man that shot a Bigfoot, but of course then the parent the, the it was it was a child a uh, Bigfoot a, a young person, and they took the man and um, and they lived in a cave. And, but they didn't, you know, at first they, he thought he was going to be dead, you know, because of the way they treated him, but they, but he had killed their daughter, you know, the mm -hmm. girl. And so, um, he, but, you know, then eventually they let him go, you know, he, he befriended them. He started eating their, their food, what they, they would give him grubs or whatever. And he would, he would, he had to eat them because, you know. They would kind of look at him, and <laughs> those are things. Uh, whether or not Bigfoot steals steals people. Now, um, this I I I want to listen to Tom's story because of the Native Americans. They said that there is a a Bigfoot that does steal children, you know. But I I don't know. I just want to listen to that story. I I haven't heard that one yet. You know. And three or four years ago, there was the, the, the three-year-old in North Carolina that went missing and was returned mm -hmm. and described mm -hmm. a, a bear-like creature that, that took care of him mm -hmm. because he, what, he, he mm -hmm. got lost. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and so w within the, the comments about the, the missing man in Marble Mountain now, uh, there's a lot of well, yeah. Bigfoot tracks are seen up there and... I, you know, I, I don't see Bigfoot taking missing people. Uh, I've, I've, no. I've I don't either. I, I've, I've never felt no. that. I've, I've always felt it was either, uh, personally, I think some missing people are walking through what, I guess, for lack of a better word, a wormhole or a portal uh, into right. another dimension. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard that too. Yeah, me kind too. It makes me wonder though. Yeah. Huh. Well, there is that whole theory that Bigfoot is a guard for uh, the Greys because he's been seen near their craft. Now, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. no, no. Does he stop them? I, I wouldn't think so. From going through a portal? No, from taking us during abductions. Does he stop abductions? Mm. Does he allow them while well, he's guarding them? Or is that why he's right. only seen during some 
encounters with the gray. See, that, that's, the, that's the confusing part, because you hear both sides of that coin. You hear the side where they're working mm. with the greys, but you also hear the other side where they'll see a UFO coming and you'll have Bigfoot running away from a, a craft, which is why I, I've always believed Bigfoot is being abducted like humans are by some alien races. Yeah, that can very well be. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if the whole purpose of abduction is DNA or genetic... Uh, study, why wouldn't they take a Bigfoot as well as humans? Right. True. If they can find them. <laughs> oh, they, they they know where they are. I'm sure they have a tracking or a, an mm-hmm. implant like humans do. Yeah. If they're, if they're being abducted. I mean, we put tracking um, devices on elk. But maybe they're not, because <laughs> you think about it, they're able to elude our technology, maybe they're able to elude theirs, too. Mm-hmm. Or is it well, like Bigfoot just here and picking out certain people mm-hmm. that they may want to abduct and look into, you know, maybe they don't want certain ones. And Did you say Bigfoot was? Yeah, uh, no, like Bigfoot uh, picking out certain people for like the grace to uh, to abduct. You know, if he's working with them, he, he he protects them, and the others he he picks out to. Here, here you go. Here's these folks. You can take them. <laughs> like a gatekeeper. He's taking the litters. Pretty much, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, the the litters, and well, he needs to take the tweakers. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that can't happen, guys. Well, you clean up the community. And you can't do exactly. science experiments on something that messed up already. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> oh, well, as far as I know, I've heard that um, the portal. If you build a um, like a, a, a arbor or something, and you put a cedar around it, mm-hmm. it's like a portal for a Bigfoot. And um, that's one theory um, that I heard as, about, you know, with the cedar uh, cedar branches or cedar trees or it, it, wherever there's a lot of cedar, that's where you'll mm-hmm. see Bigfoot more. Well, and, c- um, c- cedar is a very protective tree. Uh, so when you're looking at magical yeah. properties of plants, uh, you, you, cedar is one of the well-known protective properties trees mm-hmm. um, and that's what that's what they believe really. that bigfoot's here is because uh, uh people are destroying the planet mm-hmm. and he's here to try to say you know what you need to respect this planet you need to be more you know respectful mm-hmm. and 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 don't take things and leave trash um i've heard a lot of stories about campers when they've gone and bigfoot has chased them out because they've just you know trashing Trashing. the place and things like that yeah and so they'll chase them out because because they uh what i've been told by people that has actually told me that they communicate with them is that bigfoot is very spiritual but Mm -hmm. not religious but right, right. very spiritual, you know, and so it's all about respect and respect the planet, respect your 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 uh, your your things and that you have, and 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 treasure them, and that's what that's what I'm believing more and more, because uh, people that talk to them say they go into the woods. And they will maybe say the Lord's Prayer or something like that. And um, and that's when you get that feeling in there and they're, they're communicating in different things. So. Yeah, because we're not being, heard, we're not protecting our planet. Yeah, exactly. I've heard that they're the protector of the sacred elements, the forest, mm-hmm. women, children, mm-hmm. and travelers. And the, you know, yeah. people that have great, good intentions when they go into the forest. And mm-hmm. it's usually when you don't have those good intentions, when, you know, there's aggression or, you know, some kind of manipulation of the elements at hand where he, be, 
he or she become they become a an aggressive creature you know like was said earlier if there's a baby that they're protecting a territory they're protecting you know they or the trees mm-hmm. that, or nature itself they are a lot mm-hmm. like the fae in that in that regard especially you know i love how you guys were talking about the uh, giving offering because that is mm-hmm. you know hand in hand with the fae creatures so mm-hmm. that was beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I'm going to add to that because I, I do believe personally that uh, Bigfoot, yes, he is a guardian. He's a guardian of the forest or the mountain areas, uh, and, and so yes, he does know intention of of the humans that are there, and that's why he's aggressive towards some but not others. Um, I don't right. believe, but I want to hear your opinion. I, I don't believe he's a part of the Fae. I believe he's his own creature or his, his own Absolutely. species. Absolutely. That's, that's what I feel mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very similar... Do you think, similar, he's, uh, do you think he's a... There. Do you think he's the guardian of the Fae too? Well, if the Fae are interacting, you know, with the forest and, and the different elements, then I would think so. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes, Cause, I mean when you're looking. I agree. At, when you're looking at forest fae, uh, of course you got fairies, which are a part of that. But you also got dryads. Do you think dryads interact right. with Bigfoot as a spirit Ooh. of the tree? Probably. I mean, he does a lot of, like you said, he works with the cedars and the portals, and he does like a lot of work with like building his structures out of little tree branches <laughs> or big tree branches, and you know different. <laughs> Different uh, sightings are located, you know, amongst the trees. So I would, I would assume so, but you know, that's just speculation. So here's a thought, and this just hit me. So the dryad is the spirit of the tree. Do you think the tree knock is waking up a dryad? Ooh, hmm. that's kind of a rude way to wake Ooh. it up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you could be tapping yeah. on its face. No, but it's just, it's just, think about that every time we did a tree knock and how hard we hit that tree. Yeah, it's pissing <laughs> off the tree odd. <laughs> that could have hurt. For a, yeah, yeah really. definitely. Really. And we're actually talking about, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I want you guys back for next week because next week we're actually talking about fairies because June is Ooh, fairy month. Stuff. So it is. Next week we will be talking nothing but fae. Ooh, I love it. Mm-hmm. So that would be a fun show. Well, we also have to ask <laughs> Kayla how she did tonight. Oh, with, with the, yeah, with the uh, cat yeah, mutilations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> now, I can tell you that this one, uh, uh, one of my speakers, Judy, she um, has a teacher in Bigfoot, but she also um, talks to the little people mm-hmm. of the forest. And, and um, she was with me one night when we had an encounter, and she was actually trying to see if the little people were there, and it was not the little people, it was Bigfoot that was there. So okay. the little people were not in, the, in this area that we were. Yeah. So, so what is her, uh, and, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this uh, at the conference, but uh, what is her definition of mm-hmm. little people? Because to me, I hear little people, I think of gnomes, I think of elves, I think yeah. of... Yeah, like fairies and things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the mm-hmm. little little people. But then Tom, uh, sweet, said the little people with the native, they don't talk about them. You know, they don't talk about it a lot because... They don't think that they're nice people, the little people. It but, depends. They're but, individuals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but Judy, Judy thinks that they're fine. I mean, she talks to them. She leaves them glyphs, you know, like she'll put mm-hmm. like three stone, you know, like different ways you put branches or things like that talk mm-hmm. to them, you know, that way. Yeah. And, and, and she, she goes all into, okay, if you do this, and she, and like one, they left me, it was Bigfoot left me one, a glyph, 
And she says, look at it, just really look at it, because it can just be moved just like a fraction of an inch, and it, it, it changes the whole uh, meaning of it, you know. And she says, you have to get back to your heart. You have to know what's good in your heart. And that's what they were telling me, that I, ha- I had to get back to my heart. Mm-hmm. So, wow. So it was interesting. Now, have, you, uh, have any of you heard of anything that's changing in our mountains? Something negative that is affecting the Fae, affecting Bigfoot, uh, affecting any, any of our paranormal elements within the Cascades? No, not personally. I, no, I, I, the only thing I think is like uh, the t- the timber, you know, like when, because if you, um, what I've heard is when when a logging company goes in and they build the, the logging, that's where they encounter a lot of uh, big, Bigfoot is when they do the logging and things like that. Yeah. You know, they mm-hmm. don't, they don't, uh, you know, now you're destroying and that's where it goes back to you're destroying your planet, you know, and things. Okay. Right. Yeah. What yeah, I haven't, I felt something, um, but I haven't really heard of any stories or anything like that. And that's just, I think it, like she said, it, it is like connected to the logging or the, the, the just mass destruction and clear cutting and things like that in, in mm-hmm. really high levels. And the, the pace of growth, maybe that has something to do with it as well. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. There's, there's what, something. Can you do, there, yeah, expand on that? I'm interested. Yeah, I, I'm going to. What were you going to say, Arnold? I I was just thinking. I I've been watching another gentleman on complete different subject, but like down in Oregon, where they're uh, the state, the county, or whatever is shutting off the water to the farmers. Mhm. Oh no. Yeah, this, so they're holding, so there's not going to be any water for the farmers to grow their crops, and it's all due to two fish they're trying to protect, and that's it. But you're going back to logging and stuff like that. That would be something. If they're going to shut off the water to these flowing creeks, to these rivers that are going down, whatever, that's going to take away from, like, a Bigfoot or anything that's using that mm-hmm. source to get food, mm-hmm. to get water and stuff like that. So. It will be interesting to see what happens there, but it's down like in Klamath, Oregon, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow, They're, that uh, doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. But disturbing no, it, the ecology so drastically would be good for the fish. <laughs> no, and and that's what the farmers are all trying to say. It's like, hey, it's not yeah. us, but yeah, they've uh, and there's a they're going to try somewhere else in Oregon to do that to mm. shut off the water. And I'm like, all you're going to do is going to hurt everyone but you're going to hurt like the stuff like Bigfoot and mm-hmm. everything because everything's going to dry up and go away wow. it, doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't at all make sense because they're going to save two fish but they're going to kill 10, 10, 10 other species in that area Yep, exactly like, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're fighting yeah, for what is that <laughs> Yeah, what, and, <laughs> and so they have big groups and stuff trying to fight it but they yeah they've already shut yeah. off the water and said they're not you know and it's like Wow, folks! You, just for two species, you're going to kill off all these others. That's the same as Greenpeace derailing a radioactive train to protect the environment from radiation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like the law of attraction. Up. I love how they show up in like Hummers and everything at exactly. uh, or pipeline <laughs> rally against them. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, that really helps when you leave them running all day because you're cold. Oh, uh-huh. for him. Exactly. <laughs> but. The I would irony. say the loggers are getting better in a lot of ways, especially in our area. Yeah. Um, I do know for that, for every tree they take, they plant three. Mm-hmm. So, well, they're supposed to. And and they do. You can see them. You go yeah. on South Skagit the, on that The area issue that is, just right, right. is the soil and the underbrush that changes, you know, so, yeah. and how it drives the nature you know, into different places. So I honestly it, it, think it's done sustainably as much as possible. And they do, you know, have a um, forest management program, which is much more sustainable than what they did back, you know, a hundred years ago. Yeah. But, um, you know, with like technologies like how um, we could do a lot with a lot of the, 
the farmlands out here. <laughs> I do think we need to look be a whole a new more industry. at the Amazon area. Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, geez. With the clear cutting yeah. that's going on there with the soy for the soy fields. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It. It's too much. Well, the Amazon itself is is a mystery. I mean, there's things in the Amazon that we don't even know about that they're releasing mm-hmm. and killing. And uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, it just it, that part doesn't make sense to me, especially since those trees are never replanted. Like nothing's replanted there. They clear cut them, and those are now farms. And yeah. Next to the boreal forest, that is our largest. Mm-hmm. So what, it, what I was referring to was uh, there, there's a negative element that uh, has been released or is enroaching in the Cascades. And it may be very well, the more I think about it, the, the dogman creature that may be escalating that we just haven't encountered yet. Other than you, wow, have. yeah, that could be. Uh, so we have an agreement with the Fay that they well, it, it, Izzy hates Fay, so we have an arrangement with them that they can have Haystack Mountain. They just stay off our property. Um, but a couple <laughs> of years ago, they came in the house, um, <laughs> and we're asking for help. Uh, something was affecting the Fay on in in our area. Uh, and it kind of goes along with what you felt, Cole, uh, on the case we were at in Lyman with Iron Mountain. Yeah. Uh, there there was something on Iron Mountain that was warning Cole uh, when we were on a case there, uh, what, two years ago? Three years ago? Two. Uh, you want to talk about that for a minute? Told me to get the fuck out. Don't come back. <laughs> yeah, <know>? yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so we were wow. uh, investigating two places, and uh, it was an entity that was um, bothering both both families, owners, both families. Yeah, and uh, that we were able to get rid of. But there was an area of trees up against the mountain that. Uh, it was burnt. We were all kind of drawn to it at first. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Asked what was over there, and the homeowner said, we don't really go over there very much. And um, we took some steps towards it, and a few of our dumber counterparts we actually <laughs> went up towards the trees. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of the trees were singed by what looked like lightning. And they were in wow. a row. They were in a row. Like so, a, that was like a barrier. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I've never had this before. Um, but it was my first trip out. That was your first boots on ground case. Yes. And um, I had been going through training with the team to ground and shield and get more in touch with my spiritual side. And... Uh, I heard a whisper just over my shoulder almost, like someone was standing behind me whispering in my ear. And they said, stay away. Wow. As I started to walk towards it. And I told Eric, I don't think we should go over there. And he agreed. And I started to walk back, and that presence never left me while we were there. Mm -hmm. And, um... For those of you that don't know, I was in a car accident uh, four years ago now, and I have a real issue with grounding and shielding. Um, I'm able to ground real well, but because of the amount of pain I'm in most of the times, um, the shielding does not come natural to to me. I don't have, I'm, I'm unable to hold it real well, so it's a very weak one, but... Uh, according to others, I have a natural shield, like someone, mm-hmm. something else is helping me. And well, uh, I right. do think that comes from your Native American side, though. It could. It could also be the Austrians. You never know. Maybe Andre huh? the Giants. The ancestors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I would say Schwarzenegger, but he's still alive, so he's probably not behind me. No, he's not behind me. <laughs> <you. laughs> 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and that's that's why I say, and uh, again, I've never heard of Dogman in Washington State, but considering you've actually seen a Dogman, it would make me wonder if Dogman's just uh, more hidden here, and maybe that's the new threat. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I it was really it moving fast, and it, it felt like it was hmm? passing through. It weirds me out where it was. Higgins Pass. Right. Because I live Higg- out here now. Yeah. <laughs> and, th- and think of Higgins Pass. Higgins Pass by itself is a, <laughs> a paranormal anomaly. Well, and that's where yeah. that one woman... And I honestly, I have issues finding stuff sometimes after I see it. And I wasn't into all this when I saw that story. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what paper. It was in a newspaper. And a lady was traveling down 5.30 and she had a log thrown at her car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that was... What? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't thrown like you'd normally get a log thrown where it's uh, lengthwise. It was thrown like an arrow. Yeah. Dang, that's scary. And it's right where you guys were. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that was about Loop. Was that no? Wasn't it? No, it was right on the Osoka S curves. Oh, okay, okay. Cause uh, it, well, there's another wow, one. Wow, really? Yeah, because it didn't make well. sense to her because there was no trees in that area at that mm-hmm. time, really, like fairly close. Right. So it wasn't even like the thing wow. fell and then got a good head start. Mm-hmm. It literally got tossed at the car and threw her off the road. Mm-hmm. And wow. Oh, what year was that, do you know? What, does, what happens when you piss off Bigfoot? Come it would have been in the early 2000s. <laughs> well, not early. Uh, okay. I met my wife when I was, when, or during 2007, so late 2000s. Okay. We were, up, we were up in Bellingham still, so yeah, it would have been around 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. Facebook was a thing, so. Yeah. And I've also heard of an encounter, uh, well, it was a car, it they were in a car and they saw uh, really what said, the more I, the more I think about it too is it, it could very well have been your dog man that ran across 530 just before the Sock Bridge mm. between, between Rockport and Darrington on this side right so, so that could be the territorial range of the dog man which isn't much of a stretch mm. from our side over here. Yeah, especially how Whoop. fast this thing was moving. Mm-hmm. Like, it could cover a mile in five minutes or less. Yeah. You know, just like... Just. Well, well uh, I can tell you that... Um, I can tell you that when I was going to pick up my daughter over in Darrington... Um, because that's where she works, is mm-hmm. I was going to pick her up one night, and I was doing, you know, the speed limit's only like 50 down, 530 right. from Rockport. You know, once you pass Rockport, go into Darrington. Right. And, but I was doing about 60 miles an hour, and it was right around Illabot Creek, uh, the road, the creek, and there's the road there. Mm-hmm. And I came around, and it's like a, a little bit of a straightaway there. Right. And I said, "What is in what is in the road?" And I'm doing sixty, and I saw something in the road, and t- I can't tell you if it was who or what, but I mean it was big. And I'm doing sixty miles an hour, and by the time I got to that place, t- to where it was, it was gone. It went right up that hill, that oh mountain goodness. that was right there, mm-hmm. across from the creek side, across five thirty, and up the mountain. So, yeah. you wow. know, they, they travel yeah, fast. A, I mean, it was uh, like two steps and he was gone. Yeah. There's a uh, power line area where the power line crosses the highway right about mm-hmm. where the siding was where, that I had. And I was kind of mm-hmm. were wondering if it was using that uh, power line channel as a quick mm-hmm. route way to get through. And then it got startled when it was having to cross over the highway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just the thought that we had because of where it was. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, and on this note, let's go ahead and take our second break, and we'll talk more 
about missing people in our Cascades sure. and, and kind of the crossover between what we're talking about tonight and the missing people. So stay tuned. And we'll be right back. You are listening to S4 on Spreaker.com. Welcome back to S4, and for our last hour tonight, as we're talking about the mysteries of the Cascades, <laughs> and now we're going to start talking a little more about the missing people side of our Cascades, and what it could be, and some of the criminal elements. Uh, you, you know, criminology is always, it, it, it's interested me since childhood, really. Uh, you know, when I was, I was in high school and wrote a paper on the white supremacists and uh, the Aryan nations in Hayden Lake. Uh, so getting a BA in, in Homeland Security, that was just, that was always my interest. And I've taken human trafficking when I was in the Army. I've taken uh, counterterrorism in the Army. Uh, so the criminal mind, 
his always, and that's why uh, the last show we did with serial killers, that was fun. Um, and, and I guess fun's not the right word, because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's always that was fun. Always, always intrigued me the deviant mind. <laughs> um, so we have missing people in our community. Is it paranormal, or do we have a serial killer? Uh, I mean, uh, you, you know, that can go right many different directions. Uh, we have 22 pedophiles just in the East Skagit County area. Uh, so, just a an, an interesting factoid here with when you, when you look at the the offender list in any county. If you see abduction or kidnapping, that's not your custodial kidnapping. That is a stranger kidnapping. Um, and we have, what, three of them in Skagit County. These are felony kidnappings. Wow. Uh, when, when you're talking, because uh, these are things of study, but when you're talking Whatcom County to Pierce County, there's 88. That is 88 kidnappers. And we're not talking kids. Hey, we're not talking uh, child abductions. We're talking adult abductions. Uh, I mean, just in Marlmount, we had uh, a guy that was abducting women and keep, keeping them in his motorhome. And he just got got caught, what, three years ago? Do you remember that 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 uh, case, uh, Sevilla? No, I no, <laughs> I I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the the only reason he got caught is because one woman got she escaped and was. Oh, running. she did escape. Yeah, she escaped and yeah. they they caught the guy. Um, but mm -hmm. that's that's just one girl. Mm-hmm. Not woman. Huh? Girl, not woman. Oh, the girl that escaped. She was either sixteen or seventeen. Still yeah, she okay. was in her teens. But he he had abducted others. Yes. So and, mm -hmm. and I just I think it was this year the there the story came out from a couple that was up Baker Lake and they got caught on the trail too late and they were coming back in the dark and they saw a guy with an axe in front of oh, them geez. on the trail. Huh. And they ran. So I mean, we we know there's yeah. offenders. We know there's offenders up here. We know there's criminals mm -hmm. up here. Uh, so, but I guess my my problem with either paranormal or how do I explain it? Um, I've got five different cases in front of me. So you've got Richie Collins. Went missing from Colonial Park on Diablo Lake, April 30th, 2019. He did 20 years in the Army. He was never found. They had canine. They had search and rescue. They had helicopters. We're talking a guy that was fit. October 17th, 2019, you've got Rachel Lackaduck missing on Hidden Lake Trail. Again, mm -hmm. search and rescue, canine, helicopters, never found. She was supposed to go to a cabin because it was snowing. Mm -hmm. She never made it to the mm -hmm. cabin. You've got mm -hmm. October 8th of 2020, Alexander Pish, missing again, Diablo Lake. He had easels. Mm -hmm. So the rangers saw his car, and they saw the easels. And the next day that went by, they still saw the easels sitting there. Uh, but again, canine, SAR, nothing ever found. This was a guy that was a physical fitness trainer. Yeah. May May twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. You've got time and you know Tom Simon Seth, again missing from the same trail that Rachel Lackaduck was missing. And they're still looking for him. And then June fourteenth, twenty twenty one. Christopher Jarman, missing at Goodell Creek, and I'm not sure if he was ever found. I never found, saw any sources that he was found. Wow. You know, that's just five cases. And that that's not, that doesn't even count the, the elderly gentleman that went up Cascade River Road and they found his car. <clears throat> Three days later, they found him deceased in a ditch. Now, was it hypothermia? Probably. 
How wide is this trail? The Hidden Lake Trail? Yeah. I'm not sure. I know, it, it, well, uh, according to the trail, trail.com, and, you know, they, they track all these trails, uh, it's considered hard. You but a horse can do mm -hmm. it. Huh? Could a horse do it? Oh, I'm sure. I have an option. Not, well, uh, more of a theory. Okay. How did, how did we start this show? What did we talk about at the very first thing? What is this area known for with its history? Mines. Right. Have any of you ever been in a mine shaft? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes forever. Have you seen the air ducts? <clears throat> yeah. The air ducts that they used to make back then in the early mm -hmm. 1900s, mm -hmm. late 1800s? Yeah. So they run vertically mm -hmm. about 200 feet. Right. Uh, now, I come from an area that's known for coal mines. Same thing. Our hills are about two to 300 feet in difference from the bottom to the top. And at the top of the hill, there are air duct shafts that run straight down. Okay. Half of these are covered in ground cover now. They have signs all around them. Because we, it's our, one of our main tourist things. Mm -hmm. But none of the mines here are historically protected. Like, none of them are, were saved that way. What's the possibility? They're falling in mine shafts? In an air duct shaft. Not a, not a mine shaft, because mine shafts are usually, they go at an angle. Right. You're not mm -hmm. going to fall down an mm -hmm. angle. But the air ducts? You're going to fall, and with the ground cover we have in yeah, Washington, okay. it's going to cover right back up. So I know that came yeah. up with the Samantha Sayers case yeah. in 2016, Vesper, Vesper yeah. Peak Trail. And they searched all the air ducts, and uh, again, that's another one that's ever been found. But again, our mines here, mm -hmm. most of them were private owned, and the way you built an air duct back then was you started digging... And you stopped when you got to the bottom, but everything went up. There right. was one guy at the top with a horse and a cart, if he was lucky. Otherwise, just a horse with saddlebags and a mule with saddlebags. And the, he loaded everything down the mountain as far as he could or put it in other places. Okay. So, there's a possibility that that mine, no one knows it's there anymore. Well, that, that's, that could be... Possible on the trails, but like fish where he is parked and where his easels was painting. Yeah, that was right off Highway 20. I mean, that right. the easels are still the easels still stay. You know, they found the easel, so that one's a kind of a different one. The one on the trails, yeah, I could kindly go. Yeah, with. I, I'm mostly talking about the guys on the trails because, like, uh, the ones up the mountains. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, the, right. The ones on Highway 20. Well, either he was taken by humans or by someone else. No. Not Bigfoot. Someone green. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, well, you know. well, you just think about it for a little bit. Um, we're surrounded by volcanic, volcanic, uh, you know, mountains, uh, volcanoes, and things like that. And and have you ever been in a volcanic, um, like the tubes from the volcanic? Where it's like a, it's it's like what you were saying, like an air shaft almost. Mm. But it's it's where the air from when it was uh, lava going and different things. And I remember um, in Bellingham, up at Mount <laughs> Mount Baker, a woman and her son were skiing, and she just dis they disappeared. And the only thing that they could think of is she went down in one of those crevices. They have crevices and, and these uh, lava, like, tube things. And, and they went, and they never did find them, the, mm -hmm. the mother and the son. Never found them. And that, that was back in the 90s. Uh, but um, it, all of these mountains, they're, you know, it, whether it's a mine shaft, I mean, the ones that I was in was my father mined silver. So we were doing silver, but 
there's a there's a gentleman here in town that uh, that does gold, and he won't tell anybody where he goes because he has he, he collects all the gold and stuff. I, 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 but I, I, they I, used I, I, to I have it we, here. So I, I think we know what you're talking about too, uh, and because he actually called us about a Bigfoot report. Uh, if it's the same guy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, he was terrified because he saw a Bigfoot with a spear. Oh, and that's probably first, fishing. <laughs> well, that's the first time I've ever heard of a Bigfoot with a weapon, honestly. Don't immediately yeah, assume they, it's a no. weapon. Could have been a back scratcher. Well, no, like but, but they let, it, but, so they were coming back down the mountain they were on, and uh, there was a jacket left in the middle of the road. And the way they described it, they thought they were supposed to stop for the jacket, and Bigfoot was going to grab them. Uh, so we went up. <laughs> we, we, we went up and checked out the area, and uh, didn't see anything. Um, but we did leave a game cam in that area, and we not true. We did find what we believed to be a house. Oh, that's right. We yeah yeah. Uh, Cause, uh, we didn't get too close because we don't want to disturb their home. But the way the trees, the way the had trees fallen, were, yeah, they hadn't fallen; uh, they were pushed. Mm, yep, and, or uh, ripped. They just ripped them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was about twenty foot tall. Mm-hmm. And, you know, big. And so that that goes to another. Uh, it's actually a YouTube video where these women walked up to, and I believe that was in. Granite Falls, mm-hmm. and they hiked up the mountain, and they saw what looked like a log-built house, not a log cabin, but like a Bigfoot house, and they went in, and it smelled really bad, and then they felt a presence, and uh, Bigfoot chased them all the way down the mountain, and well, yeah, if you go into my living room, I'm going to be pissed off too. Um, but, <laughs> you know, and, and that's where you get the reports of, oh my God, Bigfoot's awful. Um, uh-huh. but then you got the, the other video where the, the guy didn't believe in Bigfoot until, well, Bigfoot chased him and his family. And then he became a re- researcher yeah. and he's one mm-hmm. that firmly believes that Bigfoot is alien and he believes, mm-hmm. um, uh, orbs appear and then all of a sudden there'll be a family of Bigfoot uh, I'm still kind of torn on that one as far as Bigfoot being alien I believe there's different types of Bigfoot I guess that could be alien uh, depending I believe the uh, similarity is that they're both interdimensional beings mm-hmm mm-hmm and so that's kind of like where portals exist is kind of where you see them or where you're able to attune your frequency to certain, you know, per se, stations of existence. Now, what's, what's your thoughts on Bigfoot speaking telepathically? Yeah. He does. Yeah, Absolutely. he does. Is that where one of our, uh, our speakers is... Uh, Learning from Bigfoot? Does she get telepathic messages? Some, or? She, she, that, and as well uh, in person. I mean, she, she has been close to him where he's hugged her. Oh, cool. Okay. He has hugged her, you know. And she's going to be speaking this August, but she, you'll hear all about the communication portion of it, the way she, she describes it. And, and it's from, she, what she told me is her teacher is telling her what to say, and this is what has to be said, and the communication. But a lot of times, she she can lay in bed. She says she can lay in bed, and she can feel his presence, and and she and he talks to her that way. Also, I believe that Tom. It does it telepathically a lot as well because he in his encounters a lot of his encounters were um like in california northern california oregon and eastern washington and um and same uh, uh he he's in uh he's 
he's in a well he was in a nursing home he's not now uh just a senior living area but um he gets messages there when all of his encounters and his teacher is not there in the nursing home with him and he gets his messages from there and that's how he writes some of his books okay so 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 can we go back to this uh collins uh that was missing because i just looked up something and it kind of makes it more intriguing what you got Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i just i typed it in and they said he had numerous gun cases inside his house that were all found empty after he vanished, mm-hmm. and there were 30 guns in his possession. <clears throat> his keys are left on top of his car. So, yeah, and that somebody was, was following uh, him. Uh, yeah, and uh, I believe that is where the criminal element comes in. Uh, I mean, if if you're yeah. talking, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, we we have Ross Lake, which goes right into Canada. Mm-hmm. And so there are traffickers up here, which uh, to explain, uh, we, we get so running the upriver group, we get asked every once in a while what ICE would be doing up here. And I, ICE is your <laughs> immigration customs enforcement. But there are a lot more mm-hmm. than just customs. They don't deal with customs so much. They are right. a part of the intelligence arm of Homeland Security. Uh, and they mm-hmm. deal with the traffickers, which is why they come up to East Skagit County a lot, because there's open mm-hmm. areas to the border. Except for the one that sits on Cro- Concrete Sock Valley Road. He's there for a fucking nap. Well, yeah. Yeah. And he, 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 parks in, in da- he parks in Day Creek Fire Department, too, and takes a nap. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's ICE. I think he's just Border Patrol. <laughs> right, right. He, he, he's letting... But they're they're probably pretty bored because the Canadian border is closed. No, Border Patrol sits there too for a nap. <laughs> you see that truck there too, and the, and the guy is definitely sleeping. Uh huh. But well, right, it's, the ice it's truck unique has been there too. because it's unique because Skagit County is going, and then all of a sudden you're in Skagit County, then you're in Whatcom County, right around right. Ross Lake mm-hmm. in the area, and then you then you go back into Skagit County again. And Ross Lake t- takes you all the way to Canada. So these boaters, they'll get on the boats and they'll come across. And so Border Patrol's up here a lot. I mean, they're Border mm. Patrol and ICE and everything because they're bringing, they're coming back and forth by boat you know, on Ross Lake. So, right, and and yeah. uh, they're yeah. running, they're running weapons, they're running drugs, and I, yep. I do yep. believe they're doing human trafficking. Human trafficking mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. is something that I study a lot. Because a lot of people they hear they they hear human trafficking they think oh it, it happens in Cuba it happens in uh, uh, everywhere but here but no uh, human trafficking happens all over the United States and Canada yeah mm-hmm. uh, and they brought mm-hmm. them into Russia uh, a lot mm-hmm. uh, so some mm-hmm. of the missing people I, I do believe are taken for trafficking uh, I I don't believe it's all paranormal I'm you know I I get called the uh, I, I, I get called all kinds of names all the time uh, but no I don't <laughs> think everything's paranormal uh, right. I, I do believe some of the ones uh, you know when, when you have canines that get really confused and instead of looking for the missing person they sit down yeah uh, yeah and and that's it's common with that's common with the paranormal cases because uh, right. one they're scared Two, there's nothing to find. Um, mm-hmm. ha, so has anyone ever seen a dog reaction to Bigfoot? Or heard stories? Uh, uh, what I understand from s- stories that I've heard is Bigfoot doesn't like dogs. Doesn't mm-hmm. like the dogs in the in the forest. Doesn't like, you know... And uh, mm-hmm. and they'll and the dogs will like their dogs will start to run after them, and then all of a sudden they'll turn around and come back, and they'll be, you know, their tail between their legs and just quivering and and not wanting to, you know, do anything. So, mm-hmm. right. So that would make yeah. sense mm-hmm. with a tracking dog. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, whether, and we know pets sense energies that we can't see. So if there's a portal, mm-hmm. for example, right. a dog may sense a portal and go, I don't Absolutely. want to go in that dimension. Hell no. Uh, so, yeah. I, well, the last park I worked at, I had a friend who had two Rhodesian Ridgebacks that he walked all the time at the park. And on one occasion, he was walking one of our trails, and they blocked him from going any further and wouldn't let him walk any further. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. they actually had him, made him turn around and walk back the other way, even though they'd walked mm-hmm. this trail many of times, and he'd walked the other place. They just wouldn't let him go any further that day on yeah. this trail. And they're met, these dogs are bred for hunting lions and stuff like that. They're not as scared of anything except right. Right. whatever whatever was out there that day. Yeah, horses mm-hmm. sense certain paranormal activity or portals as well. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stories mm-hmm. like, you know, different horse riders or, you know, elders in the tribe going out and they say, do not go in certain areas because, you know, if the horse doesn't go there, you don't want to go there. So... Mm-hmm. You know, it's important to watch the behavior of the animals mm-hmm. to see, you know, what benevolent or what is maybe a little bit nef- more nefarious. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the fey hate, cat, hate yeah. cats. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and, and we, we tell, we, we told clients all the time, too, uh, you know, in haunting cases that you always watch your, you, you watch your animals because uh, if there's a certain right? room that your cat or dog uh, used to go into all the time, and all of a sudden now they're not. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, generally that indicated uh, a presence that was in there. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, and it also brings me back to the, uh, the, the I, I can't remember her name, Patty. What was the Sock Mountain case? Mm. Do you remember, Sevilla? Patty Kriegel. For, for who? Who was it? Patty Kriegel. That's that right? I, I the, don't know. The woman I... that went missing on Sock Mountain, uh, I believe, it was six or seven. Oh years ago. yeah, that was a lo- that was a while back. But I thought that um, the two Patty two Krieger, girls, yeah, I just looked it up. Yeah, Patty Kriegel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they uh, confessed. They said that they killed her. Oh, okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. That yeah. was that's what I heard was there was two girls that she was supposed to be hiking with or something and and wow. when she went up on Sock Mountain and they did they had that bit, they had a big professional sign up there saying you know try to find her call this number and mm-hmm. everything for a long time and and then all of a sudden it went it was gone and um, and somebody said no because these girls finally confessed but they never found her body or anything no her, her mm. she was pushed i believe off the uh, top of the mountain so if yeah. she's going to be found she's going to be buried in pine needles by now oh yeah oh yeah uh, so definitely yeah if they found her body well, it'd be the animals be, didn't find her right yeah. okay so uh, she she was killed by two women what I understand was that was there was three of them, and right. they were going to go for a hike up there, and they were her, supposedly her girlfriends, and it was over. They killed her over a guy or something. Something was there, and they had the intent to do that, and okay. and they kept they kept quiet all those years, and then all of a sudden. Somebody said something to one of them, and she kind of confessed she might have been drinking or whatever, and so that's how they caught him. Okay, yeah, because I know the boyfriend took the uh, took the what was blamed for it for years, and he went to prison for other charges, uh, and so yeah, everyone thought the boyfriend mm-hmm. did it. Yeah, no, it was it was her girlfriend's, and it might have been the boyfriend that they were arguing over. Right. I don't know, I Pro- probably. you know. Probably. So, so let's see. Uh, but, so, what do we think about UFOs? Do we think UFOs are taking taking these people? 
And there's a lot I of people. A lot of people cases. say that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of people say, "Yep, we were abduct- abducted, and then they went and did some kind of experiment, and then put us back." Right. Uh, go ahead. Is it Kayla? No. <laughs> no. But I, I was literally just writing a question for the next round table. Oh. Because I just saw something, and mm-hmm. it it came from someone who I never thought of as being into the paranormal at all, or UFOs, or anything like that. Okay. Um, she's a very level-headed person. Uh, if she can't see it, it's not real, type thing. Um, the scariest thing we could discover now would be humans on another planet. We are psychologically prepared for aliens, but what if we found humans instead? <laughs> kind of makes you think. Like, that honestly is true. Through TV and media and anything that, like, any fictional works that we have, we are honestly prepared for even a full out alien invasion. Mm-hmm. And the idea of them taking people is not a big deal anymore, other than the fact that they're taking people. But them doing it, that's not out of this, uh, the realm of possibility. Right. But if it was other humans doing it, from a UFO, or like, yeah. <laughs> that kind of <laughs> makes it so that, that, that we're not ready for that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Like, it changes the playing field for sure. It does. It does. Like, well, mm-hmm. humans bleed. So you, yeah, you just shoot the alien humans. Yeah. But they're a lot more. But how would you know? Advanced than us because they have spaceships that came here. Mm-hmm. So a curious side this had is, um, what if? So some theories say that some races of the different star beings are plotting or have plotted to create a slave race of humans, and in in that part, like they could also be involved with the human trafficking because often that's what human trafficking is not just the sex industry but it also goes into like you know labor child slavery and <clears throat> slave labor and you know adult labor and in organs i mean you guys you guys feel like that could be a case in this you know factor factor into this with well, things like the grays of beta reticuli and you know what not Honestly, or honestly, I blame stories. the I, I blame the government with that more than I would alien races. Yeah, do you think the uh, tunnels come into that, like the deep underground military bases and different tunnels that connect well, so, so major there, meccas? There have been the some that came out that I, I don't hold a whole lot of credence in, but if it's a possibility that the government is taking uh, certain people to other planets. Uh, and that's kind of where the uh, the Mars is it the, yep. Mar- the Mars project or the Moon project? One Have of the you two. heard of uh, Laura Eisenhower? That one I haven't heard of. So Laura Eisenhower is the great granddaughter of President Eisenhower. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And she speaks about how they approached her and they tried to get to her to recruit to Mars. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, over fifteen years ago. So. Um, you know, she speaks about that publicly, and there's other people as well, you know, Andy Bassaggio and different people like that. Well, that goes back to the, uh, oh, God, what's the, the, the what treaty did Eisenhower sign with the aliens? Right? Ah, I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. I, I, I'm, 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 yeah. So, anyway, yeah, it's the treaty that uh, Eisenhower signed with, uh, one of the races to abduct humans. The it's cool if you can abduct our people act. Right? In exchange for Rock technology, <laughs> which, is where, which is where fiber optics, cell phones, and computers supposedly came from. And it all came down to yeah. the Roswell crash. The Griotta Treaty? There you go. That's it. Yeah, the Griotta Treaty. And yeah, uh, Eisenhower's granddaughter, 
or great granddaughter. Uh, yeah, it was the one you're talking about that came out and uh, was talking about. Yes, he did sign the Griotto Treaty, and uh, I haven't heard about her talking about the uh, Mars connection though. Yeah, I'll send you some links. Okay. Yeah, I had her as a, a guest on my show a couple times, and it's pretty fascinating to speak with. Okay. So, I, I do think that, uh, you know, because when, you, when you're looking at missing 401 information, uh, he does rule out the runaways. He rules out the, uh, the criminal mm-hmm. elements, the animal elements, uh, because none of these people... No tracks are found. Uh, if it was a cougar or a bear, uh, you would find scuffle marks. You'd find blood. Mm-hmm. You'd find uh, things of that nature. Uh, you know, they've had cases where they yeah. found f- firearms that were, uh, the barrel was either bent, uh, the weapon was actually disassembled and laid out in pieces, <laughs> like they were, you know, breaking it down to clean it and... Huh. If something is coming at you, you're going to use your weapon to shoot, not break it down. Well, maybe they didn't break it down. Maybe it was somebody else. The criminal element. (laughs) That's that's like that that one. They ask, why does somebody that murders somebody bury the body in their own backyard? Well, they usually don't. No, that's not true. <laughs> no, no, no. A, a lot of, a lot of bodies are found in the rain. And that, when they say they're all backyard, it. that means somewhere they're familiar with, somewhere they yes. can visit a uh-huh. lot. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 that that rain I was in the literal backyard, not North Cascades. <laughs> no, like uh, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Me and Kayla were watching something, and the guy buried the victims in the garden, the community garden, that, like, just down the street. Oh. And he used to spend his lunch Oh, jeez. They had the greatest tomatoes, didn't they? <laughs> Strawberries. Strawberries, oh. okay. So I went green. <laughs> 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 um, continuing with the whole, like, missing person here. Mm-hmm. Let's say it was portals. Okay. Okay, now just right. continue with this thread of thought here. They disappear into portals. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be agreed that most portals are two-way in some way? Yeah. Yeah. So think about the people that we've had throughout history, like uh, the guy from YouTube that claimed he was from the future. The time traveler? Yes. Time travel. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what if he wasn't? Okay. Again, that UFO mm-hmm. thing with them being humans from another planet... What if he thinks he's from the future, but he's actually from another area of the universe and walked through a portal? Yeah, Possible. parallel universe, parallel uh, interdimensional time travel. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that would wow. tie a lot of things together that right? would make more things. It's like that little boy life. that disappeared in... Uh, somewhere in the U.S., and he was found, like, 10 miles away in, like, way less of a time that it could ever take in for him to get that far. That well, was my thought, it was a portal the, he walked the, through. Yeah, there's been several cases where uh, a two-year-old child was uh, went missing and was found on the other side of a mountain range. Yeah. You know, yeah. a, a two-year-old's mm-hmm. not going to go mountain climbing. Um, well, mm-hmm. and that, that's two possibilities. That's a portal or it's an abduction because look at uh, Travis. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his last name? Which Travis, one? Travis uh, Walton? Yeah. He was, what, 20 miles away from where he was taken? Yeah. When he was found? Mm-hmm. Friend, so they don't always drop you off where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, look at the look at the car. Yeah, they abducted an entire mm-hmm. car and they dropped it on the wrong side of the freeway. So these guys are driving, you know, on the 
wrong side of the freeway. They realized their mistake. They re-abducted the car and put it on the right side. Mm. I, you know, aliens make mistakes. <laughs> 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 and they put the wrong underwear on. You know, people wake up and they, where the hell this underwear came from? This ain't mine. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. I, there, there have been many cases of that. Uh, or like the say. Like when you go into a fairy portal, uh, time changes. And when you come back out, even in the same spot, time is different. Yeah, I think it's... And it seems like you were only there for a moment, but you were really there for like three weeks. So Seven years for one minute? Seven years. <coughs> yeah. So you're there for five minutes, you wow. come back 35 years later. Right. There's that story of that old man wow. that came back and or he left when he was a boy. And then he came back and everything had changed. His parents were gone. And well, there's the other yeah. there, there's the other legend uh, of the guy that lived with the Fay for 20 years, and they warned him, "Don't get off your horse." And uh, he went. He was on his horse, and the minute he got off the horse, he crumbled to dust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And don't don't eat the food while you're there, right? Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. wait, why don't you eat the food? Huh? I guess it can keep you there forever. Yeah, and that's also where the the changing story comes from. Oh, I'm screwed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they put anything in front of me, I'm probably going to eat it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Hershey bar. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for the little old witch in the cottage. <laughs> it's trying to bump you up. <laughs> Setting you up for eating. <laughs> Eric doesn't cook. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Well, I do sometimes, but my food's good. House made of candy. No, it's not made of candy. I, yeah. If you're no. a termite, it is. No. <laughs> so, PBR was talking earlier about a road in British Columbia that has a reputation of missing Native women. You know about mm-hmm. that one, don't you? Yeah, not talking about mm-hmm. that tonight. Sorry. No? Nope. 215 reasons why. I'm going to leave that one absolutely alone. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, you know, that is a part of the Cascades that people don't think about. The Cascades goes into Canada as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And there's three cases. Mm-hmm. Not that road. No, it's not part of that road. Uh, but it's still a stretch of Diablo. Mm. And Diablo means devil. And a lot of yeah. these cases involve, well, Devil's Lake, the devil, uh, the Devil's Mountain. Uh, many of these cases have the name devil in them. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Well, no, there isn't a waste. We found that out. Uh, Jamie Justice told us that. Mm-hmm. Devil's Elbow. Where is Devil's Elbow, elbow at? Uh, Concrete Zog Valley Road and 530 area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They only named it that because they thought it was a cool name. <laughs> it was the 70s. <laughs> oh, Devil's Tower. <laughs> Look at Devil's Tower. Yeah, like, it... it Half the time, it's just because of stories that, Mm -hmm. um, honestly, a lot of them aren't true. No, like, same with Devil's Tower. Devil's Tower's not, uh, you know, I've I've been there. Um, I've heard stories about big black dogs that will chase people out of the area, uh, along with, and that kind of ties into me with, uh, you know, Arnold's Bigfoot story. About the Bigfoot that's got hellhounds, for lack of a better term. Mm. Mm-hmm. But is Devil's Tower evil? No, absolutely not. It might have some paranormal elements to it, but that doesn't make it evil. But that's due to human stupidity. Mm, true. Because. Mm-hmm. They've been warned for years not to go up there because mm-hmm. it's a dangerous area, and they do, and they die. Mm-hmm. 
because they fall. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're going to have paranormal activity not there now because they don't understand why they died because they were stupid in life. They're going to be stupid in death. Yep. For... <laughs> <laughs> well, and they don't, imagine they don't know they're dead. Yeah. Those little devils. You'd think after 50 feet, you know. <laughs> I would, I would, I... About yeah. the 48th foot down, you'd think, you know, like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> like... Right? Unless they drop so fast, they don't even know they drop. How about, yeah. like, the dams that have people, like, still encased in the concrete? Oh. <clears throat> Is that, like, yeah, Cooley Dam? or? Yeah, Grand uh, Cooley. Yeah, yeah almost. I, I don't actually think there's a dam in the world that doesn't have someone in it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the new ones. They just kept pouring. They had to. Yeah. Well, that's what they said. Yep. Well, no, it's true. Like, back then, they didn't have the technology to help <clears throat> them stop pouring. They didn't have the right. types of concrete we have now so that they could mm -hmm. pour over top and not lose the strength of the dam. Um, I don't know, every one of our dams is cursed. Unsafe right now. Really haunted. <laughs> well, not just really <laughs> yeah. haunted, but like they're only rated for like a 7.0 earthquake. And, mm. uh, and they've built down below them. Like, we have no chance if they go. Mm -hmm. Do you have damn sirens uh, up in Marmore Mount, Sevilla? Yes, they do. And um, because, well, there's three of them above us, so. Um, wow. And it's, a, it's the, well, the siren that you heard was for, for the uh, right, fire department. Right, that was the fire but department. The, but the, the sirens for the dam is, is a different... <laughs> It's like uh, I can't even like it, three lo uh, long be uh, three be three sirens and then a real long one or some things like that. So oh, got, got a few a, minutes to get out. You got an extra siren. We have a whoop whoop whoop. It, it, and then a guy oh. talks. It, yeah, and then the guy talks and says, "This is only a test, or the or this is oh. a test, or whatever." We have we have the 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 great voice. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh my God! Honestly, this, the green boy. Hello. The government, the government really needs to get on the whole safety procedures of our dams because, according to uh, Skagit County's disaster plan, mm. if Lower Baker Dam blows, those in concrete have 15 minutes. No, they don't. They have mm -hmm. 30 oh seconds. But it says 15 minutes uh, in the paper. Uh -huh. Like, not a chance. Nope. Yeah. They have about 30 seconds to get the hell out. Quick. Yeah. yeah. Quick. You got about the chance mm. to take a breath. And, and then hold it for a really long time. And don't go up <laughs> Burpee Hill, because Burpee Hill's sliding. You have the whole town of concrete <laughs> trying, to, uh, trying to evacuate up Burpee Hill, which is their evacuation route. It's been a sliding hill since the 1900s. Mm. You grab a broom and you get in the bathtub. Oh, I was going to say, I'll grab a broom <laughs> and I'll fly up the mountain. But, yeah. <laughs> so, Savella, where do we find information yes. about the Morrow Mount Sasquatch Conference? Well, I've it's been in the paper and it's in the Concrete um, Herald and it's on Facebook. It's on my uh club site which is on facebook i have it's northwest sasquatch two and the, the numeral two mm -hmm. um club dot club and um that's where i don't take like i don't play games on it if somebody the people that are on in that in the, the on uh, join to the join my club we have that. Um, it's on the radio in Bellingham, and it's also in um, the newspaper for Skagit County. Also on the radio in the Eastern Washington. And uh, let me think, where else? But mostly, a lot of it's in in the Concrete Herald and and on Facebook. 
and um, and then I have flyers, and I have the flyers all around, and and I want to thank you so much, Eric, for coming and and going to be uh, streaming live here on in August. So that'll be wonderful, and we're having and you're in the paper too because I put your name in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, to clarify, people need to go to the club to find out information online because we are a listening audience that is international as well as nationwide. So, uh-huh. uh, uh, oh, it's Northwest on Facebook. Okay. And I used you... to have, and I have an email. Uh, the we have email which is Northwest Sas- Sasquatch two. And it is at Outlook.com. Okay. That's probably the best way they can. uh, So go ahead and email Savella if you want tickets or more information on. And uh, what what are the ticket prices? It's $15 per adult um, for one day or $25 for both days. Children under 12 is free and veterans are free. Excellent. Excellent. So if you want your tickets, okay. email Savella. And Harmony, where can we find your books? Oh, yeah. Um, you can find, you can get a copy on Amazon. You can get a, a Kindle. You can read a copy of Kindle on Kindle. And you can also find it on my website at wildcraftwellness.net. And you can get a autographed copy, an inscribed copy on my Etsy page under Wildcraft Wellness as well. Awesome. And what books do you have? Uh, My book is called Birthing a New Paradigm, and it's an autobiographical, part autobiographical, part guidebook to uh, transcending the density of earth and moving into our own empowerment and abilities to create in this world. And um, it's the transformational process I went through to be able to help other people in their shift of this great time that we're in. Awesome. And you, for our locals, uh, S4 and FMP will be at the Skagit County Fair. Yes, there is going to be a Skagit County Fair this year, August 11th to the 14th. So make sure you come check us out at the Skagit County Fair, as well as the Marble Mount Sasquatch mm-hmm. Conference, mm-hmm. August 28th and 29th in Marble Mount at the Community Center. So next week, yeah. June 13th, June is Fairy Month. And that's confusing for mm-hmm. a lot of people because... Uh, I don't believe in a veil. I believe in energy that brings things through a veil. I don't believe a veil is thinning. That's just my opinion. But June 21st is what we call midsummer. And for many, Mm -hmm. they think this is when the fairies come through. So June is always considered fairy month. Mm -hmm. Fairies are only one part of the fae. So next week, we are talking all things fae. So stay tuned next week as we talk about what are fey, different types of fey, uh, how to keep the fey happy so they don't well, make you a paranormal incident. <laughs> 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 and then, of course, we have Roundtable on the 20th and what constitutes paranormal missing people on the 27th. So, any last mm-hmm. comments? <laughs> No. Nope. Oh, a wonderful right. show. Uh, yeah. You can also check out my YouTube channel, um, Wildcraft Wellness, and subscribe there for free. Excellent. And do you have a YouTube channel at all, yeah. uh, Sevilla? Yes. No, oh. no. <laughs> okay. okay. No, I don't. I wished I did. I had a, I had a podcast uh, one, and then I, I just I get too busy. <laughs> I can't oh, I do understand it yet. That. <laughs> I understand that. But that's all. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So, folks, have a safe week and look forward to next week. And remember, keep your eyes to the skies. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight on S4, the official voice of Forest Moon Paranormal. You can contact S4 through our website at www.s-4radio.com or on Facebook. Make sure you give us a like on our page and join the Forest Moon Paranormal group. If you are interested in advertising, take a look at our packages and contact Cole or Eric at 1-360-999-2830. Again, thank you. And remember, keep your eyes to the sky.